Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you for logging in and being here for the August uh, regular business meeting of the Northampton Housing Authority. So I'll call this meeting officially to order at 530 and ask the secretary to please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. I'm here. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Here. Thank you. And Commissioner Tarbutton. Present. Thank you. I have a point of order or question, please, before the meeting starts. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, hold on one second. Let me see you here so that I can, I was going to move right on the agenda. Just a minute. Let me get your picture back up. Yes, Commissioner Tarbarton, what's your point of order? My question is, there are two commissioners who uh, terms have expired as uh, 6-30, 2023, and I called the, uh, the, the city council, and they have having a meeting to vote on one in particular on the 29th. So both, I know there's a leeway sometimes, but um, my question is if it expired June 3rd or 2023 with two commissioners who aren't really able to participate. Unless okay. you did I'll something just, I don't know about. Yeah, I'll just respond to that. Everything in the city regarding commissions, as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware, and all the time I've been, operate under a sunset provision. Those people, until their replacement is named, they continue to serve in that capacity. And I'm going to consider that as being the case for tonight's meeting. Okay, can you send me that information, please? I, 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 no, I, I, no, I checked it out, it was different. I'm gonna go on with the meeting. Yeah. And then if there, you may file any um, objections after the meeting if they yeah. are so noted. So okay. you won't send it to me. Okay, thank you. I, I, no, I don't have anything to send you. It's just the past practice as I understand it. And I'm going to leave it as that. And you can inquire otherwise with the mayor's office. Uh, it's the city council. Okay, so, all right, now I'm going to continue on. I think we noted all members present, right? Director Leeper, all were present. Yes, yes, I apologize. Yes, I'm no, sorry. That's okay. So I'll go on then with the next item, which is for resident comment. Um, pardon me, Madam Chair, if I may ask um, if you could rearrange the agenda slightly to be cognizant. Oh, I forgot. That's right. We conference. typically, I understand. Thank you. And um, as as we've typically done for Mr. DePace, we're moving that item to the beginning of business, and that is the item of the audit. So, um, not an audit. The financials. Why don't you read then, please, the item? I have the revised one here, but I closed those when I was addressing the recent. Point of order, just sure. a minute. Hold it's on, a, everybody, while I get that revised because I got I got a little distracted there. Just one sec. And did you the say first you want one to is the financial? Why don't you go ahead and read it, please, Director? Sure, Lee. sure. Resolution two zero two three dash zero six. Accept the fiscal year twenty three quarterly and year end financials, certification of top five compensation document, and certification of compliance with lead paint notification laws as prepared and presented by Gary DePace, the fee accountant. Yes, the quarterly year end financials, and as has been uh, often the case in the past, we bumped this. Point of information. Point of information. Yes. Uh, I'm confused because on some records we have Gary DePace, hi Gary, as the fee accountant. And then two months ago in May, he was called the auditor. So which is his title? He's the fee accountant. Not the auditor? He's not, no, the, auditor. not, He's not the, auditor. the auditor. The auditor is Markham and Associates. What? I'm sorry, Mr. DePace, I didn't hear you. Yes, I'm the fee accountant for the Housing Authority, not the auditor. The auditor is Markham uh, and Company. I'll get that thing. I think it was misprinted last time. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. So that point of information is clarified. Gary DePace, <clears throat> as the accountant, will give the presentation, and then we have the resolution to accept. So right. please uh, carry on, please, Mr. DePace. Okay, thank you. And um, actually, the year ends that ended June 30th. Um, the reason we obviously need this vote is we need to have these submitted to DHCD uh, by the end of the month. Uh, we have till August 30th, but you know, the sooner the better. Um, these represent the financials for the 400 program, the 689 program, and the MRVP program. All three are state programs. Uh, also included, which you should have copies of, is the top five um, actual paid to the compensation of the top highest five salaries of our, the Northampton Housing Authority. I will point out on the top five first, if you look at it, um, if you see it on the farthest side over from um, that form, there is percentages. There's actually two zero percents, there's a 0.2%, there's a 1.1% and a 1% variance. Those occur, but way, the way it works, once we are audited, um, and like I said, there is an audit of this work that's done, uh, anything that's greater than 3% becomes a finding. Uh, obviously, there is nothing that's over 3%. Um, and in reality, that just shows that what a person was actually paid uh, was budgeted properly and nothing expended more than that. That's the purpose of this form. Um, Second to that, we're gonna be look, talking about the 400 operating reserves at the year end and where we stood in comparison to our budget. And uh, I will tell you, we're gonna start with the 400 program. And in the 400 program, when we did the original budget, if you remember, this was months ago, we were making projections of where our operating reserves would be at the end of the fiscal year. We had a budget where we estimated it to be at $1,003,840. That was approved. When we actually closed the books, the actual reserve ended at $1,037,836.74, roughly about 30,000 higher than we projected, which usually is, happens because we, we're not spending all our resources because Things happen, especially like in staff, we have staff turnover, um, downtime, maybe a little bit less in maintenance than we budgeted. But when you're when you're that close of a variance, when you're saying $30,000 on a budget that's uh, over a million, uh, I think it's pretty accurate to say that uh, something's being done correctly at the Northampton Housing Authority. So that's the 400 program. The 689 program, uh, which is the units of our um, assisted living. We had estimated our reserve. Let me just flip to that page where we estimated it to be. We estimated it to be at 39,024. We ended actually at 43,973, about $4,000 more than what we had budgeted. Um, in the MRVP program, we had estimated our reserves to be at $5,377. We actually closed the books at $5,419, uh, roughly $100 more than what we had estimated. Um, so of those three programs which we're voting on, those all came right within our uh, budgeted request. Um, and there's nothing that I can see that's really out there, out there gleaming to be a problem. Um, obviously there's two things that happen after we do these. Um, we have a PMR, that, that's where a performance management review, that's where DHCD reviews how the management has gone. Uh, there are no indicators in these financials that are gonna show up as being a problem. Uh, and then obviously the next level is we have a full audit of all the programs. And that's where we talk about audits of Mar Markham comes in and they perform the audit of these. And at this point, I don't see any problems uh, with any 
with anything coming up for the upcoming year. Um, with that, I guess I will take, because we have a resolution on the table, any questions that anyone might have. Are there any questions through the chair for Mr. DePace? And I can't see anyone's picture raising mm. a hand. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask. Um, yes, Commissioner Tarbutton, do you have a question for Mr. DePace? Um, yeah, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the information and the, that you uh, adhere to. I didn't see uh, this 667, um, this federal uh, building property in, involved in this. And I have to tell you, it's a little hard. I have to do the next thing because you put on one kind of upside down. So I okay. can, uh, yeah, if that, and there, I don't know what it is, but when I get these things, they're very small and I have to blow them up. So. <laughs> If there could be yeah, some consideration it's, it's, of through the forms, the forms sometimes, but I wasn't mentioning the federal programs because the resolution you're adopting right now is strictly the state. Um, so I wasn't going to go on to that until after that resolution. Um, the way the federal works, meaning the project, our federal projects, there is no um, acceptance or required acceptance of year end financials because that's done through the audit process and our what, what I call, we are my submissions to REAC, uh, the Real Estate Assessment Center. Thank um, you. But I can, uh, I can talk about the federal in terms of our, our operating reserve and those both also fell right into the category of our original budget. Um, but anyways, for that, I would say, let's stay to the state resolution. Okay. Yeah, I do understand that. I just, as I said, the last time we saw you in May, I believe, it would be really helpful if we as a board went through training um, about all this stuff, because it's like, it's almost like I need you right here when I'm saying, what is this? What is this? So it would be really helpful. So that is the only reason why I'll abstain from this, because I only know what I got five days ago or six days ago. So I really want to know. And I, my other question is, have there ever been a state audit? Have you ever been in where the state auditor came in? Uh, years ago, we used to be audited all the time by the state. The state auditors were discredited of the federal audit program um, because they did not have the qualifications to perform audits of housing authorities. And HUD um, did not, they did not pass the mustard, I would say, from HUD's uh, perspective, which is why we're required to get an audit from a uh, a firm that is accepted under the federal guidance. Okay, thank you. I know I did get an email, a survey, I guess, from uh, someone from Markham. I thought that was his last name, but I guess it's a corporation. And um, yeah, Mark, so- Markham so, is our is your auditors, yes. Oh, he's our auditor. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. Yep. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, other questions from commissioners for Mr. DePace, then I'll ask um, if you could reread, please, the uh, resolution, Secretary Leeper, and we'll take a roll call. We'll move on to vote. Yes. Well, but actually, I'm sorry. We need it. We needed actually the motion and second for that. So, is there someone first? I'm sorry, I, I neglected to ask for that before we took questions from commissioners. But is there a motion to put this on the floor, please? Motion oh. to accept. Okay, I heard two voices. One of them called the motion. That would be Commissioner Brooks, and seconded by Commissioner Richards. And is there any further discussion from commissioners? Then I'll ask to read, please, the resolution. And we'll yes. take a we'll call vote. Thank you. Re resolution number 202306 to approve the quarterly and year end financials for fiscal year 2023, certification of the top five compensation document, and certification of compliance with lead paint notification laws as prepared and presented by Gary Pace. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority wishes to certify quarterly and end of year financials. Certification of top five compensation document and certification of compliance with the lead paint notification laws, financials as indicated for um, the programs that we discussed. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority 
do hereby approve the quarterly and end of year financials, approve the certification of the top five compensation document and certification of compliance with the lead paint notification law for fiscal year 2023 as prepared by fee accountant Gary DePace and presented to the board. Further, that the authority and the executive director in their name shall be authorized on and after the passing of this resolution to do and perform on behalf of the authority all acts and things required of the authority to fully perform all obligations and be it resolved that the resolution take effect immediately. Madam Chair, would you like me to call the roll? Yes. Uh, Chairperson Carney, you're muted. Sorry about that. That's okay. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, I'm going to say no. No. And Commissioner yes. Richards. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Commissioner Richards, yes. Thank you. Yes. Madam Chair, with five yeas and one nay. Okay, thank you. Then that resolution uh, is approved. And I think there was another further one connected with that under this item. Um, pulling it up now. The next item then, Commissioner, I'm sorry, uh, the next item, Director Leeper, please. Uh, yes, the next item would be the uh, resident comment. Okay, so we are done. Then I want to thank you, uh, Mr. DePace, as usual, for coming. We're glad we could accommodate you at the okay, early part of this that. evening. Yeah. And um, the other comment now that the, now that the resolutions have been approved that we needed to, I did want to also indicate we we're talking about operating reserve of our federal program. Uh, that also closed at a um, where right to our budget. Uh, we did have some big items. If you remember, we uh, bought the tr took care of the truck and everything, but our reserves are at $855,277. And that's um, net of our GASB liability, which clearly on the federal side is also taken care of. So that's, we are in very good financial shape on our federal programs too. So I did want to make that comment. Well, good news all around. Thank you, Mr. Pace. And we'll see you. Thank we'll you. see you the next time. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> At this point, we're going to open it up now to resident comments. And I think Jack has kept a little tally there. If he's there or Kara, one of you is keeping the little sheet of the residents. Um, yes. Like uh, so we, uh, Jack, I know you have um, the been historically the person um, calling that. So if you could do that, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So just a reminder, everyone is going to receive three minutes. Please make sure you state your full name and what property you live at. The first person on my list is Doug Kierdahl. Hi, uh, I don't actually have anything to raise here. I'm just observing the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Kierdorf. Thank you. Uh, the next person on my list who has the ability to unmute themselves is identified as Grace. Uh, Grace, if you could just let us know if you are a resident or not, or if you're from the public, we will get back to you if you have a comment to make. Sure. Grace, would you like to make a comment? I see you unmuted. The volume is very, very low, if at all. Yeah, you, I can see that it lights up when the person speaks, but I can't hear anything. Just, just try talking a little bit more. Can you hear me now? Okay, I will swing back to Grace. Um, the next person is Angela Santanello. Okay, Ms. Santanello, please. Hello. I, I don't have any comments today other than um, thank you all for doing a great job. And I know y'all don't hear that often enough from 
all of the people, but I get a lot of compliments from other residents about um, several different things that it, that the Salvo house is actually one of the better. I mean, it's gotten better in the last few years. Um, speaking from experience for the last five years that I've been there, it is 90% better than what it used to be. So I appreciate all of the hard work and the ability to work with everyone to be able to make this place a safer place for everyone and a happy home. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks. The yes. next person is identified as Scorpion Tail. If you'd like to unmute yourself, just let us know if you're a resident or not. Uh, the photo is highest good. Okay, we're going to go on to the next person, Judy Okulski, I believe is the name. Uh, she's a member of the public, Jack. Okay, then I will go on to the next person. I'm not sure if you are a resident or not. It's identified as iPad. iPad, if you are able to unmute yourself and just let us know whether or not you are a resident. Give you a second. If not, we are going to move on. Okay, the next person is identified as KC. Um, hello, I'm Mary Margaret Kathleen Chapman. I live at McDonald. I've been here a little over four years. Um, I'm a, I'm apologizing in advance. I have to leave early. I've got another obligation. Um, and I have a feeling that you're not really gonna make any bogus comments about, um, the, you know, Agardo and Joella leaving early the last meeting. I was in the meeting and we all have disconnect issues, but I do want to say the way that y'all spoke about them when they were gone was a bit alarming. So who knows what you say about everybody else. But anyway, uh, I about the same thing to say that I always say, which is um, internet is a necessary utility. Uh, the key policy is burdensome. And y'all placing limitations here on McDonald Gardeners is effectively restricting one of our few field good activities for six months out of the year. We worked with Grow Food to fix it up. And then the administration saw fit to put their handprint fingerprint on it. So that was, it's still not cool. If anybody needs to know why that the numbered signs and the white picket fences are offensive, please feel free to ask me. I know some of y'all might not be able to think that same way, but it's it's really unfortunate. And we, you know, again, when I talk to residents, the main thing they have to say is we really wish we could be treated as humans and not as less than we might be elderly or disabled, but we're not ignorant. And decent treatment is as much a human right as food, clothing, and shelter. A lot of us were professional workers in our previous lives before we were hit with disability or age or whatever. And um, I just, um, I'm going to introduce an idea to y'all you may not have heard of, and it's called the time tax. What it has to do with is Poor people having to spend so much more time than people with money on simple things. Y'all, I am not kidding. This is really frustrating. Do you want me to give an example with the authority today? Do you want me to give an example with my government phone? I have a million examples. Y'all, please look it up in the dictionary. I always say that to my students. If you want to know a word, look it up. If you have trouble spelling it, I can spell it for you. Also, um, there's just a way to make it more efficient. Has the administration considered a resident advisory board? Have you considered asking the residents what we need, what our ideas are? It might be worth your while, actually. And about the time tax, time is money, whether or not you're making money. Time is peace of mind. I make art. I'm still saying that, although I've not had quite the peace of mind I need to make it lately because of, I'll say because of just, disrespect but who knows that just might be me um let's try to read my notes and this latest we got something today about uh about the fire inspectors coming to inspect tomorrow and i said oh will they be in our apartments and the the property manager says no 
I didn't say they would be in your apartment, so I didn't need to say they wouldn't be. I guarantee you, the first thing in people's minds is, oh, Lord, they're going to come in and look at my apartment. So it might have helped if you could, you know, explain things a little better. And, um, you know, we have vision groups. We have vision groups. People have visions for progress and success. Have y'all considered asking residents what their visions are for a fabulous housing authority? And again, I'm going to use the word obfuscation. I can spell it right now if you need it. Until then, I encourage you to look it up in the dictionary and see why I use it. It leads to a lot worse, a lot worse. Casey, okay, so you have 20 seconds I, left. Okay, the lease is outdated. Would you please consider updating the lease? That's all. Thanks for your time. And I've got another meeting. Now. Thanks for listening. Thank you. And then you. we also have a Moto Rola Moto G Pure. If you could let us know, unmute yourself and let us know if you're a resident. Hello, my name's Al Shagnon, resident of Walter Level House. I just like to comment on it's great that we got a change in management in the building. It was well, long overdue, and I hope uh, it seems that things are working out great. It's nice to have somebody at the door, like Tara. She stands in the doorway and greets people and sees what's going on and people coming in. You need that. It's very important for the residents to make them feel comfortable so they come out of their houses. They don't come out. And uh, other than that, that's all I have to say. I just want to observe the meeting. But I, I'm thankful that one thing is taking care of new management in the building, which was long overdue. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. And so at this time, I have called on everyone. If there's anyone I missed who, okay, I have um, Commissioner Tarbutton. Okay, watch me figuratively take off my board hat and I put on my tennis hat. Well, I just wanted to sure. say, um, uh, there are a number of tenants who are part of uh, the neighborhood watch, including myself. And I think what people were asking, I found out recently that someone was getting a hundred dollars off their rent. I was part of it, other people too, and I never got a penny from it. So I just want to know how is that going about? Who makes that? And I've been looking for a line item that takes care of that. But I would like to know that. I think somebody made a comment, people are getting paid to go to a meeting. I think that, I don't know what they were saying, but I think about that as being you're getting paid something. And I worked very hard in the middle of the night getting and looking. So there are people who work even harder than myself. Personally, I don't think $100 a month is even more. I think you need to pay more for that. It is a lot of work. And then secondly, um, I just I alluded to earlier that we should really, I don't know if I need to make a motion of this, make larger print agendas. People here, we're talking about diversity, eyes, elderly, this, including myself, they're very hard to read. Right before the meeting, someone came in and they were trying to get on, on the meeting. They couldn't read it. And so it's a really hard uh, thing to do. I know that I asked into it, and they, well, that's board reading, but I asked to attorney general's office and it should be accessible to everyone. So, um, sorry about that. Where is everyone? Um, uh, yeah, people are very concerned here about the carts. I submitted into our property manager, because I live in this building, some ideas for carts and people will say, well, we're working on it. We're looking into it. So, I, I mean, it's, I get it. I get the fire hazard issue. I get the part about stores wanting their carts, but come on, there are people who need that for stability. And you think we have one door open that we come through and carrying groceries and stuff. It's really not a very good thing to do. We can't park there because we have the bus. So we really need to put our heads together. And so I don't know if I need to put it as for further agenda items. Usually I'm told that's operation. So, but I'm a tenant and it affects me as well. I did look up a few and, and sent them. Um, and also the AC. I know according to the, um, what is it? Uh, safety people, you know, whatever. I can't remember the name. <laughs> Board of Health people, I don't know, that if the heat goes off, say like in September, that's an emergency. But we've had heat goes off on a weekend and we just have to endure it. Thank goodness this weekend that we didn't have the swelting temperatures outside. But the a uh, AC in the TV room in the cafeteria isn't working. And then we just get that fixed. Or no, maybe they we looked into it three, three, month, three weeks ago. So that's confusing. Somebody's supposed to come and fix it and then it's not truly fixed. 
And I think about it, you know, our great people uh, in the kitchen area who feed meals on wheels, they're working in the kitchen. It's hot, it's stuffy. Residents, that's the thing that we should do. And I know you think you put in two big box fans, but it's just blowing hot air. So it would be really nice if people would put some attention to that because it's really very needed. And then I have one other thing I wanted to say. Oh, and uh, I know my time's up, but um, anyway, well, it just went there, the cards. Oh, there was a a reverse race. Uh, there was a comment about reverse races. And I just have to tell you, I haven't heard that since I grew up in Texas. I mean, that is what a lot of supremacy groups say. I definitely knew because I told you I grew up going to school with tenants whose parents were part of the Klan. And so I really am stressing and begging again, as I have since I even got here before I've gone to board, that we need diversity, equity, and inclusion classes because this, you can't explain that away. I mean, how can people, I was just surprised I didn't see anyone on the board uh, say anything about that. So it's, uh, we, we got a long way to go. Thank you. Then we have one other um, person, Scorpion Tail, you're free to talk. Uh, yes, hello, my name is Gwen and I would rather not say where I live, except I'll say that I live in family housing. And I um, am wondering what there are for updates for from the landscaping engineer that was here um, and what's coming up with that in terms of any updates on the basement issues because we had a really, really wet season. And um, so I'm interested in anything related to that. If it can't be on this agenda, I'm wondering if there could be an update on the next one. Thank you. Does that conclude our resident comment? I believe that's everyone. And I'll ask then, is there any other members of the public? Well, first we ask, we ask for staff comments, I know. Uh, no, the one public you were going to go back to, Jack. I'm sorry to intercept, uh, Chair. But remember, you said. Uh, then, you uh, yeah, I'll go back to I'll go back to Grace. But first, I'll ask: Is there any member of the staff who would like to comment? If not, could we please go back, try once again for Grace, and then I'll ask again if there's anyone else from the public. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, Grace, you have the ability to unmute yourself. Uh, I don't know if we can hear you yet. Uh, you're still muted. Oh, you're unmuted now. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Um, so I am a tenant from another housing authority. Um, unfortunately, our board um, does not have any remote access um, and does their meetings during business days and business um, hours. So those that work cannot attend um, so that's, that's a whole nother subject, but I'm, uh, been involved in just going to different housing authorities and just seeing how boards are, um, essentially supposed to be run, um, and trying to learn as much as I can. So thank you all, um, for allowing me to kind of just spectate and take notes. Madam Chair, you're muted. Hi, right, thank you. Um, Grace for joining us. Is there any other member of the public would like to identify themselves and say hello? So someone joined with ending phone number 9394. I'm not sure if they want to unmute. Let's just put a, phone. would you like to speak 8394? Hello. Hi. Yes. Well, hi, this is Roy Martin, 81 Todd Street. Hi, Roy. <laughs> you hear me okay? Yes, we can. I had a heck of a time because I kept trying to do things with my thumb and it wasn't working. So, uh, but anyway, all right. Now we have several things going on around here. Number one, we have one person that walks around and he's walking around drunk even today again and bothering people. All right. And, uh, you know, right. I just, I try to stay away from him, but. You know, he's hard to stay away from. And uh, so I ain't going to mention his name, but, you know, I'll let him know downstairs that, hey, right, we can't put up with this. He's bothering the women. He's bothering everyone else. You know, I, uh, I think I stopped him from the golf balls because he was shooting the golf balls 
hitting cars and everything. And, uh, but with that said, right, uh, oh, Tara, I got bought a new cage. It's a parrot cage. <laughs> Boy, it's plenty big enough for him. So, uh, that you'll be happy about. And, uh, I don't know, right? There's a lot of things going on here. And I'm, you know, I'm starting to take notice of it because I'm one of three people on the ballot, right, for, uh, November's election for uh, city council at large. So, uh, so it's three of us, and there's not going to be a primary this year. It's going to go right to November election. So I'm hoping to be one of the three. And, uh, yeah, I'm working at it. And I'm working at a lot of little things. You know, uh, you know, I've got I got a young man, right? You know, his mom and dad lives in here, and he's been helping me quite a bit here, and and doing a lot, helping me to clean up my apartment. Because yes, I had got cluttered, and uh, I'm getting it uncluttered. You know, and he's helping. Me. Uh, plus my other worker, right from uh, my PCA, right? You know, between the two of them, they're getting me cleaned up. So, Mr. Martin, you got 30 seconds. I got 30 seconds. Well, 30 seconds. Take 30 seconds to say, Tara, I hope everything's going well with you. And uh, you know that I worry about you because uh, when you look so slender and so small, right, I worry that something might be the matter. And don't work so hard. Take a break. You know, uh, give some of these places back to where they belong. Take care of just your own over here. Okay. You know I love you, kid. Right, I'll talk with you later. And, uh, you know, all the housing, the people in here downstairs, they're doing a good job. You know, the young lady there, right, in the front, she's doing a great job. And you know, where our other people went, they were doing a good job here, right? Except for, well, one, I won't mention his name, so... <laughs> We we weren't in love with him. Let's put it that way. Okay. Bye. Okay. Person Barney, I believe that's everyone. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Martin, and thank you, all members of the public and residents, <clears throat> for uh, sharing your thoughts. As usual, just so you know, and it was um, actually mentioned, although this resident has already left. Typically, we don't address things brought up. Um, in public comment immediately in our subsequent um, meeting, business meeting, because often those might be items of business that would need to have uh, public notice. So that's uh, probably the biggest reason why we can't bring those things up in the regular meeting. Also, since it was mentioned, I, I do want to mention as well, <clears throat> regarding public comment, um, so we're all aware of the fact that there was the Supreme Court case earlier this year. In fact, it was yeah in March of this year that brought up the whole notion of um, content of speech in the public comment. And uh, that particular um, housing, that board, that public board had as part of their laws that they could not they couldn't retain this requirement of the public quote they can't be they can't require the public to quote be respectful and courteous free of rude personal or slanderous remarks inappropriate language or shouting those do not for us to curtail any of those or make any of those requirements violates the freedom of speech of attendees at meeting, and we can't have those requirements. I happen to disagree that, you know, that that should be so far reaching. However, I understand that these are public meetings, these are public comments, the content of which may not be um, limited. Does not mean that this body approves anything made in public comment, any remarks by anyone else. And that should also be said by noting that those same rules don't apply to us, as one of the commissioners pointed out. 
um, the public bodies themselves do have such requirements. For example, we may not in, in the public session uh, speak of confidential matters or, or personnel matters or anything of the like. So it's not as though we're not responding when we don't respond to those remarks made in public comment, certainly, but it's just letting you know that we can't curtail that speech. And if there is something that the public body has to take up, it will need to be notified in a public meeting, whether that's a bylaw change or something like that. I hope that didn't take up too much time and clarification. Uh, but I think that puts us right on our next item of business. I have a question regarding that. Can I? I guess, uh, Ms. Yeah. Maureen, yes. Yeah, uh, Chair, I, I appreciate you uh, bringing that up because you're right. I was so fascinated when that case uh, came up and I read it. And I think they referenced John Adams or something that people have freedom of speech. What I would ask also, because um, you're right with the speech. And then I, I think that I know that you had some uh, experience in the city council. And there's the thing about decorum. I was going to ask earlier, because when I made a comment, I saw a board member doing this. And I would be like, you know, come on. Don't do that to me. Don't do it to when residents talks. And I have to even admit myself, one of the speakers was speaking. I was like, oh, my. Uh, but that's from people who have all this wealth of experience. And that's um, more than unprofessional. But it's like uh, you wouldn't expect that from people who who are on this board. That's all I'll say on that. Thank you. So I think the next item of business is the executive director's report. I have too many windows open. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, the next, uh, you didn't call for staff comment. I did call for staff comment. Okay, you did. I didn't, I, I, I missed it. Okay. All right, I'm already so, a little, so don't, don't be. All right, no, all, right all right, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. I think that the next item, you can just correct me if I'm wrong, that, but after all of the tenant public staff comments are given, we move directly to, yes. and this was my confusion, because again, I have too many agendas in front of me, it's either accepting of the uh, July minutes or it's executive director's report. Executive director's report. All right. I had 50-50. Okay. Take, take the... Uh, Take the chair, I mean, take the uh, space, the table. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yes, the executive director's monthly report for August 2023. Our GPR was $218,742, of which we collected $198,664.55, which was 91%. There are $103,040.31 of outstanding, which is all current residents. Public housing had no uh, annual certifications uh, for the month. Section 8 had 61, um, 60 of which were completed. One was expired uh, due to processing of paperwork. Um, a wait list for federal applicants are one bedrooms are 96, two bedrooms are th 34, three bedrooms are 23, four bedrooms are two, and our Section 8 um, has 58. The state applicants, the family wait list has 16,891 and the elderly disabled has 4,397. Public housing had five move outs. Section eight had seven move outs. Um, public housing had five move ins. Section eight had three. Public housing has one uh, family on notice for move out. Um, end of the month, we had 10 vacant ready, um, uh, eight vacant unready and uh, a total um, uh, of 18, 10 of which are pre-leased. Um, make readies completed were five, four of which were rehabs. We took in 396 work orders. We had 80 from the prior month, completed 274 work orders, and we have 42 work orders uh, pending. Executive director follow-up from last month's concerns. Um, the concern was that a resident from Hampshire, Hampshire Heights brought up about flooding and, mold, and the mold study. Um, the action, at the end of July, we received the first substantial estimates that are under review by the state for under uh, just under $2 million, which includes basement water mitigation, repaving the roadways and curbing, repaving the walkways, and completing the dumpster pads. 
concern was brought up from a resident McDonald about poor drinking water. Um, I contacted the city um, about water testing and Ian Henderson, chief water department operator, came out on July 28th, 2023. He found the water is perfectly safe for human consumption. All parameters are well within the state and federal guidelines. The resident was verbally informed of the results and told that she could ask for a copy if she wanted it. Um, a resident at Salvo claimed um, that he was a licensed mold inspector and that the building was filled with mold. Um, the resident made these same allegations in April of 22, 2022 and distributed 192 copies of misinformation to neighbors. Upon investigation, I found that he did not have an active license in Massachusetts for mold oh, testing. Yeah. However, I hired a licensed company to test and had all floors and uh, corridors tested and the air quality inside showed to be better than the parameters of the outdoor test on the same day of sampling. Oh, and you can have to um, Sorry, um, a Salvo resident um, uh, reported roof leaks and mold in the bathroom and, the, and it being too hot. Uh, we've been working with this resident to transfer into a renovated unit for the past year, and he has refused. The resident has contacted the Board of Health, and they cited both us and him. We asked him again to move, and he refused. We are currently um, in the courts and awaiting the judge's decision. As stated in last month's report, the roof is a fish project um, actively being worked on by the state and assigned an architect. There are no active leaks. Concern, a Salvo resident reported that maintenance, there were maintenance issues in the common area. The concerns about the cleanliness and dog feces were addressed by staff before the last meeting, which was uh, before the resident reported to the board. Several residents from Salvo reported a particular dog not being muzzled. I spoke with the resident who has changed to a strap type muzzle versus the full face muzzle, which I took photos of. It seems this is where the confusion lies, but I will continue to monitor it. A resident at Salvo brought up the issues with the new stoves not getting hot enough. Uh, we have been in regular talks with the state about this project and held the remaining floor until uh, they were able to provide us with a solution. The issue lies in the newer regulation, which limits the temperature due to fire safety concerns. Hot plates were purchased for anyone who would like while it is resolved. Our project manager at the state has brought it up the ladder and they are working with the manufacturer to try and find a resolution. Right now, the burners are being investigated. Update of events. This month, we hosted meet and greets at all five elderly disabled properties to introduce the newly assigned property managers and to give an overview of, of our resident services program. We provided light refreshments and answered any questions that were asked. All five of the meetings were well attended by residents. From July 10th through August 3rd, we partnered with the Northampton Public Schools to participate in the Summer Eats program. During that time frame, we served a total of 184 lunches with 144 being served at Florence Heights and 40 being served at Hampshire Heights. Over the 16 days that lunch was served, we averaged three per day at Hampshire Heights and nine per day at Florence. Our staff enjoyed spending lunch time with the children and we look forward to participating again next summer. The podiatrist visited Four Sander Tobin K. Helen McDonald House. 12 residents utilized this on site foot care service. During the most heat, recent heat wave, we purchased many, many cases of water, Gatorade, and freeze pops for residents to have as a, a need to stay cool. We reminded residents that our community rooms are air conditioned and notified them that what cooling centers were open via a robocall. Many residents expressed thanks to our staff for this kind gesture. In July, there was an article written in the Daily Hampshire Gazette to highlight the fantastic work Grow Food Northampton has been doing with our community gardens with ARPA funding. We hope you've had a chance to read it and see the pictures that were published of our residents enjoying the community garden space. So ends my executive director report. Thank you, Director Leifer. Yes. <clears throat> I do have a question regarding that, please. Okay, so um, I hear, I see one question for Director Leaper for the report, please, Commissioner Tarbatton. Yes, um, my question is, were, when it comes to the stoves, I got my stove three years ago and it's wonderful. It fits fully where the one I had before had problems and for three years I had problems. So I'm exceedingly grateful for this, but I think it was a resident who said that the, and I'm not mechanically inclined, 
that something didn't fit well because someone said it took them two hours to boil just recently on another floor. So I'm just wondering, were they ordered incorrectly? Were they the same as one before? I'm confused by that. So, um, and then secondly, you did give some people some hot plates. And I was a head resident at Mount Holyoke College and also at, uh, not head resident at, at UMass, but hot plates were not per permitted. It was a fire hazard. So I'm just thinking, it's been a while. I'm just wondering, do they change the rules and all that? But it, I just didn't know that that could be uh, used. You know, just like the, remember the halogen lamp? I remember we all had to go through this and I explained, people were upset, but we couldn't do it. So I'm just asking a question regarding that. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm confused about the AC because you just said in your report that it was fixed in the common areas and it's not fixed now. And let's just thank God that, um, it's not sweltering outside. And I don't know about the leaks. I don't go around that. It's too, too stuffy. So I don't know what has been done, but I'd like to see these reports that you're talking about. Like you said, uh, a couple of things, you, you fixed this, but I, uh, as a board member, I would like to take a look at it because I'm not sure what's going on. And before you address that, Director Lieber, and before I go to some other questions, I know that this, uh, <clears throat> This has been an ongoing issue with the state, um, and I know that you reported this in the past. Um, if you don't mind giving kind of a synopsis of just uh, you know that whole that whole issue and how we are addressing this, this has been going on for a couple of months now, and it's been something that DHCD has been very unhappy with since they purchased the the lot of stoves. So I, I guess if you could. Um, not only for Commissioner Tarbutt and for anybody else who missed it when we talked about this in the last couple of months. Certainly. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, so so this was a capital project that DHCD funded. It's phase two of three. Um, the first round, um, there was no issue. Um, the state of Massachusetts um, uh, passed some law that uh, regulated um, the wattage for the burners. Um, and so these stoves were manufactured based on the order. Um, and um, when we when we got the stoves and, you know, we're we, you know, had a mass installation of them. So we installed 40 of the 60. I know 60 of we installed a percentage of them. And when we installed them, we started receiving complaints. And so we went and we um, tested it ourselves, checked them against the old stoves versus the new stove and found that it truly, in fact, wasn't boiling even water enough to cook pasta. Um, I did check with the fire department um, who said that the hot plates that we purchased were um, acceptable as long as they were on a counter. Um, and um, DHCD has taken issue with the manufacturer who refused to help us, who told us if we changed out to the changed out the burner, even ourselves, that that would then vo void the warranty with the matter. And so um, DHCD's top uh, council has gotten involved and, um, you know, they're really contemplating pulling them from being able to bid on any other um, state project based upon this debacle. Um, and so I'm just waiting to hear back from them um, as to, you know, what the next steps are, whether they're going to um, purchase a part to make the current stoves uh, work properly or whether they're going to make the manufacturer replace them or whether they're just going to cut the manufacturer off and get new ones from somewhere else and fund it. So I'm waiting for a decision from DHCD on that. Um, I, that's what the issue is with the stoves. Um, I'm not sure exactly what reports you're talking about, Commissioner Tarbutton. I have an email here from um, the water department they came out and they um, they came out and they tested the water and um, found the water to be quote perfectly safe for human consumption and all parameters within state and federal guidelines. I'm not sure what documents you're talking about that you would like to see. Oh, the maybe the mold. So I have um, I have here. Uh, Uh, we had uh, Wagner inspections on um, April 30th, 2022. 
uh, we had Wagner's inspections uh, come and do the whole building cost us $930 for um, all of the air samples and the service fee to have them tested uh, back when the resident originally put out to all other residents that the building was loaded with mold. Um, I wanted to- You mean 2023, just before we get- No, this was- the Back original, in 22, okay. The original, the original complaint started in 2022. Um, and the resident at the time that was on the last meeting that said that they had a mold license in Massachusetts um, made the same thing and distributed it to 192 apartments. We were bombarded by fears of what was happening and this nonsense that our building was, you know, crawling with mold. And so I didn't want to just put the fears aside. Um, one, I checked to see if the person was really a licensed mold inspector and they were not. Um, but two, I had someone that tests when we have uh, issues um, in units um, in, in the past, we've done business with them. I had them come out and test every single corridor and floor um, for, uh, an air quality sample, um, and it came back that the air in the building was better than the air out of the building um, the day of the testing, and that um, that was performed on, um, eight, well, I have the invoices April 30th, 2022. Hi, can I ask follow-up? Yes, you can ask a follow-up question, yeah. Where, where are you? Chair. I want to with my name, but I'm indecent. Oh, oh okay. Oh, okay. TMI. Well, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say, uh, Kara, thank you for that, that report. It does fill in some questions. The thing that I was just saying when you're saying that you, you did this and this person came here at this report, maybe it's just me, but I'm interested because I just would like, who, who are the people that were getting these uh, stoves from? And uh, what is our relationship with them? Did you go through a procurement? Because on the board, I've never seen a procurement. I don't even know what a warrant invoice is. Like me, I go to different meetings with other resident board members and they're talking about stuff about a resident, uh, a warranty invoice. And I was like, is that something to do with an arrest? And they're like, you don't do that in your meetings? I'm like, no. So I'm just curious about that. And I'm also going through a self-paced course with the uh, HUD through financial management because I don't like issues coming up here and I don't know anything about it. So I'm just curious about this stuff and I would uh, appreciate it. And I, I I hear what you're saying about a tenant. Um, I didn't get that. So maybe you, uh, that with the who said that they were on the board or they tested it or whatever. Uh, I had a friend come by and our, our mate just happened to be one of those people. And they were in my set and said it was really, uh, there was not any problematic, but you might just want to keep it clean. And when we had that spring cleaning and it was right before the people came visit, it was all cleaned up. So fine. I, I like having visitors here when things are being clean, but um, I don't know. I, I wonder what is, is misinformation? Is that person's freedom to say what he says? But you know, people were, people I think were worried even before that happened. Cause I had talked to people a year ago and said, my wife goes to visit her, her, her kids or grandkids and they're fine. But the minute she gets back, da, 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 da. I never ever had to think I had to go through allergy shots. So something's not right. And mold is a thing, mold and roaches. So it's probably the roaches. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I worry about that. And sometimes I just wish that it, it would be more thorough and people wouldn't be penalized for bringing issues up, even if it's not, you know, thank them for bringing it up and say, I'll, I'll look through it. But um, I get kind of worried when I see people seeing almost penalized for vision, vision, bringing issues they may be concerned about. So that's all I ask is that we do some best practices here when we're dealing with tenants and their fears and concerns. Thank you. I think the next board member with a question is Commissioner Cancel, please. Uh, yeah, Director, you mentioned that um, you had somebody um, take samples of the inside of the building and they determined that the um, quality of air was better inside than outside. And I certainly would hope so, but um, uh, just for clarification, what um, was it deemed to be safe? Yeah. Um, okay, I just didn't hear yes. that part. And it was it was Wagner inspection, and um, it was uh, 
they give you a, a graph, um, a graph report because there, there's really mold. There's many, many different types of mold spores um, that are um, go under many different names. And so there's usually acceptable levels or non-acceptable levels. And there's a graph and, you know, they even color code it to show green or red or, you know, yellow, et cetera. And so um, they came, I used Wagner inspections and, and it came back um, that it was completely fine um, and that there were no issues that needed to be addressed. Okay, um, thank you. I, I have a follow up with that right quickly to, to address the chair. I mean, the AD, if I could. Um, sure, you can have another follow up. Uh, yeah, with that, you know, it's very interesting. I don't know anything about that but mold and all this kind of stuff, but I just keep thinking about people who say they lived in buildings and it was raining. It, it goes in their basement when it rains. I don't know. I don't know mold is in mildew, but I would be concerned about that if that's been happening for 10 years. I don't know much about it, but it would seem like that would be an accumulation. It wasn't at Savo that I'm talking about, so I'll clarify that. But I was thinking about when I was reading this about the Springfield Courthouse, they officially had somebody say everything's fine, everything's fine. And then people were like, no, it's not, because again, they were talking about the health issues that they were uh, uh, afflicted with. And they came in and they were like, okay. So I just wondered, can you get a second advice, third advice? I mean, on this, I don't know, uh, I don't know the person name that you said about, so I haven't had a chance to look it up. This is the first I'm hearing about it, but I'm just saying. If people were concerned, because they were concerned years years ago, and I started going to an allergy clinic two years ago, and I know there's a correlation, or I'm going a little cloaky here, but I really do think that there is a problem. So I would hope that the air is better and gets better. And that's not something we say is done, scratch it off the list, that we continue looking into that. So um, Commissioner Tarbutton, the, the issue at Salvo, wherein um, a panic was created, I did some testing to um, see if there were any issues. The issue with the basements at Hampshire Heights is a over $2 million capital project that's in the works with DHCD. DHCD, when they deal with the capital projects, they do all the procurement. Um, so uh, one of the other questions you asked was the procurement of the stoves. DHCD is paying for it. They do all the procurement process. Um, we don't have to do any of that because they take care of it. It's their money and they do what they want with it. I just bring it to the board and say, this is what they want to do. Um, are you okay with that? And so, um, you know, they, they went with the same kind of stoves that we had before, but with regards to the basements at Hampshire Heights and Florence Heights, those, uh, you know, the Hampshire Heights issue is a huge project. Um, because it encompasses so many different facets to be able to correct the problem. And it's been an issue since the building was built over 40 years ago, um, where water has come in and hence why the prior administration put it as part of the lease that people aren't allowed to use the basements, they shouldn't be doing anything in the basements. Um, because it's problematic. It was built on clay, so there's no place for the water to go um, but in or seep up. And so, um, you know, I, I recognize that and put it in our capital plan um, to address it and have been uh, working towards that um, on a daily basis. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Commissioner Tarbutton yeah, well, and your yeah. question, Commissioner Cancel. Well, clarification what you just said that you said that was an issue first of all is DACD still DACD point of uh, information it, it it's not it's I, I can't say that name I, it, I, I it, it, DACD. it's e it's I know I e -O -H -L -D. okay e fine e -O, e -O um, HLC is um it's the executive office of living housing essentially and so um okay. yes, it is different now Okay, I'll say former DACD because I can't say that right now. But the one thing that I thought about, I mean, I, I've said this before, it's kind of, uh, I, I just can't believe people are living in something that's, a, a you know, it's on the lease. You said it was the former. I just heard that now. I thought it was, because you, you said we have it on the lease. How much are they rebated for living in a place where they think they're going to get a basement that doesn't have, that they can use for their wash and dryer, but they can't use it because of something that's not their fault? I would hope that they'd be rebated, a percentage would be taken off because it's not livable. I mean, it's just like, did you also, people who couldn't use their stove, especially one tenant who loves to cook, can't cook. So are they rebated for the months, of the, the weeks or days that they can't use their stove instead of that hot plate? Are they also getting a percentage off? I know that would only be fair. 
So um, I'd, I'd rather not. I'd rather not get into the back and forth because this is a very big issue regarding all of this, and I don't think that it's. I know that we we have some questions typically for the executive director's report. I know that in the report, you know, we we touched on a number of things, and one of the things was the claims of the uh, mold. And I know that we have other people that probably want to address these. But I think because this is such a big, I expect that your response regarding rebates for people with stoves and re rebates for people with um, uh, apartments that have basements that are impacted by water. Those two are very big issues that probably require maybe a, a, a detailed and written explanation that could be reported back to Commissioner Tarbutton's question rather than giving all of the numerical, now, if, if at all, rather than spending the time now going back and forth about whether it's appropriate and how much is appropriate to give as a rebate for 30 days of lack of use of stove, for example. And so I'd rather not use the time now, which is typically just a clarification of, of, of issues brought up by the executive director and the executive re director's report. Um, that, that's my sense, because I imagine that this could go then back and forth regarding each particular number and you know the value at which I don't know that this is the time for us to take that up. I also wonder whether it's something that it even starts to impact on open meeting law. Um, and that's because there are many people who fall in the category of having received stoves and whether there is what kind of remedy we're, we're providing for people, whether that be for the stoves presently at Salvo or over the years historically since the previous administration. Um, we're going back 20 years at least that there have been some sort of allowances for the water coming in or not. And I think that that's better presented as a detailed report of those if there are some sorts of accommodations made for those people rather than trying to take something that's really and the public isn't really given notice of. So if that's something I think for a future meeting that we want to have some sort of detailed report on financially, how is the authority responding to the um, uh, financial loss or monetary loss to residents who have the loss of the use of a stove or the use of a basement, for example. And so, and how are those calculated and all the rest of that. That's I, my sense, and I'm going to before before I before I go back then to Commissioner Tarbutt, I'm going to ask Attorney O'Connor, in your sense of you know what we're treading on here in terms of other policy that is being discussed. Do you think that this kind of treads on our getting into open meeting law that should be no mo the public should be notified of before we? Discuss. Madam Chair, I, I absolutely do. This discussion is way too detailed, way too long to not be its own separate agenda item. So perhaps we can put it on next month's agenda for an update on, you know, the basements at Hampshire Heights and, and what we're doing to mitigate that, um, et cetera. But this discussion, in my opinion, has gone on for too long, given that it's not an agenda item. It was just a response to Executive Director Leaper's executive director's report. So I'd suggest that we put an end to it and we move on. Uh, thank you. Um, I would, if there were a motion made by a commissioner now to ask for a report on where water mitigation stands presently or in September when the report will be given, um, that, would, that would probably uh, answer all of the questions that I anticipate would come up in this try to back and forth right now. So would somebody like to make that motion something that would I'll both allow no, I would, but I think Eduardo had his hand up. I didn't know if he wanted to make it. It's more eloquent than I am sometimes. 
Oh, I, I don't know. Then yeah, is that is that uh, that was just a suggestion by Commissioner? I, well, uh, uh, no, I, I get the. I turn to you. I turn to you, Commissioner Cassa. Thank you. Um, I would like to make a motion to uh, put on um, next month's agenda the um, topic of uh, mold rem remediation at uh, Florence Heights and Hampshire Heights. Um, at Salvo House. I, and by the by the way, I, I, I will say that I disagree with uh, Attorney O'Connor. Um, we have the right to respond to the director's um, report and what she talks about in that report. And um, it's within our right, regardless of how long it takes, uh, to um, to comment on that or to ask clarification. Um, but for the sake of uh, moving on, and I do agree with you, Madam Chair, um, that it's, it's just a very long topic and we should discuss it. it. It should have its own agenda item for sure. Okay, so I'll take that. I'll accept that as a motion made to ask the director to provide a report regarding water mitigation at Hampshire Heights, at Florence Heights, and at Salvo. Was that what I heard? Or did I heard the Salvo thrown in there, but I don't know if that's the intention of the motion. Uh, I'll ask. Oh, he's yes. Okay. Um, Director Lieber, do you have that motion? I have a, a motion presented by Commissioner Cancel to add mold remediation for Florence Heights and Hampshire Heights to next month's agenda. Not a just report. to add it, yes, to give a report, a report yes. on on efforts made to date from 1946. When it, what was the when was the building? I know it's going to require a lot of library research, but let's go back to if you haven't got anything else to do in September. But no, I mean, it would be really helpful for the whole, for us to see the history of this project when it was built. We know it's very, you know, it's it's part of the, it's it's the place where actually two of our pro, uh, pro previous state representatives lived at some point as children and our board members presently have either lived um, so I think it's important for us to kind of look historically, kind of see what what efforts have been made, whether they are trying to uh, compensate tenants for 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 use lost of, of square footage, whether it's or, or anything else, and what kind of conversations have been had by previous administrations, previous boards. I think that would help us clarify and, and focus in terms of um, keeping this, this topic. So at, at any rate, now I'm getting too far ahead because I, I think I heard that there's a motion and a second. And uh, I think we can ask for a roll call vote on whether, you know, on this particular motion to ask the, the, ask yeah. the executive director to report on those efforts to date. Yes, yeah, so a motion was made by uh, Commissioner Cancel to get, uh, get a report from the executive director regarding the mold remediation for Florence Heights and Hampshire Heights, seconded by Joe, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton. Um, roll call vote, Commissioner Carney. You missed Salvo, since you're detailing oh, them. Salvo. Yeah. I didn't know that the original motion. Well, I uh, actually, uh, um, I, I saw a thumbs up is what happened when when um, Commissioner Tarbutton had suggested Salvo be, you know, added on. I saw a thumbs up and I'm assuming that's a, yes, the thumbs up meant yes, that would be the uh, the uh, OK with the original maker of the motion. OK. OK, so roll call vote. I've included Salvo. Uh, Commissioner Carney. Yes. Chairperson Carney, I'm sorry. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner uh, Cancel. Yes. Thank you. And Commissioner uh, Richards. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, then I think 
I'm not sure, but I think that that concludes the executive director's report and questions thereof. Then I will move, because I have it actually open here, to the next item of business, which is the approval of the July 2023 20, minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Commissioner Brooks, thank you. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the minutes as um, transcribed from July, 2023. Is there any additions, corrections, or deletions? Yes, Commissioner Tabard. Um, I left that meeting because the, the person who brought that agenda item uh, on it, new business, got disconnected from the, uh, the group and he wasn't able to present it. And I laughed because I did, and it's amazing, not one commissioner seconded. I don't think someone told me in the history of meetings, they've never known that. Not even seconded to discuss it. And so I left. So I can't approve something that I wasn't there. I heard about the meetings and stuff like that, what people said, but I wasn't a part of it. And I think that that was wrong. I actually think I'm looking into it. If that wasn't a violation of the open meeting law. I don't know. I heard people reading things. How'd you get together to know to read stuff? Who orchestrated that? Is that a violation of the open meeting law? And I just think that was horrid that something like that would happen to a fellow commissioner who's not here. And there was a disconnection. It wasn't you know, like me who said, I'm not here, but to also let people know that uh, there was a problem that happened with their phone. And I was just grateful that nobody got hurt from it when I see that happening. I've seen something like this happen in the city council. I think it was city council woman, Rachel Moyora. She brought up an issue and her phone went off. And, they, and Jim Nash, the president, said, uh, we can't really feel comfortable bringing up this issue to the person who uh, put it on the agenda and they're not here. So I don't understand that. And the whole part about orchestrating. So most definitely, no, I think it was wrong and that I'm looking into it with the uh, uh, attorney general's office that that shouldn't have happened. So again, what we're doing is we're voting to approve the minutes as they're written. So I'm um, asking <clears throat> again, is there any addition, correction, or deletion to those minutes as written? Delete the part that when the commissioner wasn't here, delete that because he wasn't a party to that. I thought I made that clear, but I'll just say it in, you know, it's kind of like Simon says, mm -hmm. please delete that part because he wasn't here and I wasn't here because he wasn't here and you're going through <clears throat> it. It would not be tabled so he can address the issue that he was raising and that there was no one who seconded. I understand. So I think you're making a motion to delete the section, everything, everything from where Commissioner Cancel leaves the meeting. Yes. Okay. Does that? I think he was recorded as leaving the meeting at very early on. I think it was actually just it was new business. The, it was new business. It was the new business agenda. That that's when he left. He, he was there. No, no, no. He left. He left. He left after. He vote. He did not vote on the approval of minutes. Uh, he has to speak to that. I I can't. I don't re remember. I well, just you may. Remember. I think you're asking us to delete the officially recorded minutes, to delete everything from when Commissioner Cancel left the meeting, and I think it was the last we saw of Commissioner Cancel in the meeting was in the approval during the approval of minutes at which he was not present. I, I don't think so. And that's not what I'm saying. So let me please clarify. And I'm so sorry. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to put when his phone went off, when he had the new business item that was about something that he had brought up. And I, at the time said, let's table this and not one board member seconded. So we could even discuss it. So oh, I'm, would, you, I'm not, would you like to delete everything from when you make the motion? From when I wait, oh yeah, sure, I get it. Not tonight, but then, yes, of course. No, no, you want us to change our minutes so that they reflect nothing after you make the motion. After I made the motion then, because he wasn't there, that we shouldn't be addressing something in the presence of someone who's not there. Right, right. but in terms of our writing this down now, because we're gonna vote on whether to delete that, should we write down for the record that Commissioner Tarbutton makes the motion that we delete all items on the recorded minutes from the time when she makes the motion. That 
Commissioner Consell wasn't there. However, the motion was written. Just make sure. Chair, Madam Chair, if I can chime in here, we, we can't yep. delete the minutes for the meeting that happened. That would be an open <laughs> violation. I know, I know. That's why, that's why I'm bringing it up. I mean, I don't know what the deletion should be. What kind of deletion? Typically, a deletion is made when something didn't happen and we're writing that it did. Well, the person who authored the uh, uh, agenda item wasn't there. He got disconnected. And y'all went on with it as though he was there. I know, so I, and I, that's why I would, I would vote. I would vote against your motion, and that's the reason I would vote against your motion. Because it, the reason I would vote against your motion is that we did meet. It did happen. We had. He wasn't there, but it was his issue. But it was his issue that he was bringing up. At, the, the question doesn't add, the the meeting minutes note that Commissioner Cancel was not there. Yeah, it, it means that he left the meeting, not that he was disconnected. Okay, you what you're saying, what you're saying. Do whatever, do whatever, I'm just bringing it up, do whatever, please. Thank you, attorney, for speaking in. Uh, I thought it was doing the public section that we were thinking, but thank you for that. I just think uh, I've heard it and I've said it. Thank you. Okay. I understand. Let's call the question. Okay, but first there's no other additions or corrections or deletions to the meeting minutes. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Cancel has his hand raised. Yes, Commissioner Cancel, please. You had it before Marilyn spoke. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I do have a correction. The minutes read that there was statements made by two board members, uh, Commissioner Jones and Commissioner Richards. Uh, and the minutes read that their written statements are attached, but they're in fact not attached. So that's my correction. I understand. Um, I, I, I actually in the have, communication. Yeah. Go ahead. Go was, ahead. Director. Was the were the articles from the Boston Globe attached as well, or you didn't see those? Because I have them as mine, but maybe in the file we dragged over your folder, they're not there. Jack, are you able to click the link and see if it's there for me? Yeah. So they were in the email that you sent to the board. Yeah. The attachments of the minutes. Um, it yes. looks like when the PDF was created in the folder, those attachments aren't there. They but they were included in the email you sent to all the board members. Okay. Are you so, saying that you haven't had a chance to see them, Commissioner Kessa? I'm sorry. Are you saying that you have not had a chance to even see them? No, no, I I couldn't find them. I couldn't find the statements that were made. Well, I, I sent them in an uh, email. Sorry, sorry, no, 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 no. I'm not asking that. So even tonight, you haven't had a chance to see those statements made by Commissioners Brooks or, or Commissioners Jones. I'm sorry, Commissioner Richards or Commissioner Jones, who had written statements. You haven't seen them yet? No, but but that's not what I'm saying. No, I have okay, not okay, seen them. Well, but that's uh, not well, what I'm, I'm concerned saying. On both, I'm concerned on both counts that you haven't seen no. them even yet. What, what I'm saying is that they're not attached uh, to the minutes uh, as it is written in the minutes. In the minutes, it says uh, um, uh, at the very end of the minutes, it says um, uh, statements were made by um, uh, Commissioner Jones and Commission Commissioner Richards um and these are attached but they were not attached to the minutes i understand so what correction. you're saying i understand and i'm really sorry about that they were attached in the in the email that i received however it's very possible that you know i i think when i received them actually it said um commissioner jones statement and and richards i think they were in one file but they included Commissioner Jones' statements and the two articles that he referenced from the Globe and wherever else, <laughs> and Commissioner Richards' statements, which was a standalone. I know other commissioners received that email. I don't know if they clicked on them in the same way. And might it doesn't matter. I mean, the issue now is that you did not receive though, or you have not even now to be, and not that it's on the agenda for us to discuss, their statements, for example, aren't on the agenda for us to discuss, 
But it is important that you see them and that the public knows that they're there as part of the public record. And obviously, some of us getting them and being able to collect them and some of us not indicates at least a difficulty in being able to. I'm sure that they're there, you know, for the public record. That would be a, certainly an addition if they're not presently. They are an important part of the minutes. So how do we fix that? I have a question. Uh, before, we, before we go to your question, to Director Leeper, is there a way in terms of making official and part of our, at least for when someone goes to the meeting minutes at our website? It will all be scanned as one, one document. So, so the minutes themselves are two pages. Uh, I have this, the single page statement from Commissioner Richards. I have the two page statement from Commissioner Jones and I have the two Boston Globe articles that'll all be scanned and attached as one document um, uh, and posted on, on our website. They're not presently, they're not presently posted to the oh, website. No, no because, because we have to approve them. Correct. Okay. Then I think it's, um, it's important that we take Commissioner Cancel's uh, note, note the fact that he didn't see them and at least include that as an addition for the record that we have for the record, the statements and their referred news articles should be attached. So we'll put it as an addition, even though they may appear, they may appear now in the board resources. What we receive now for the board resources tonight, I'm just looking at the document. Um, well, maybe somebody who has the whole list of all the board resources open. All right, I'll take a minute to find them. You know, and I know it's difficult with the size of documents and all the rest of that to read things, but it just takes us a little longer to have to, and part of that is also, I, I can't stand having so much paper. Um, obviously neither can anyone else because nobody can tell me whether it's in the board resources. So I think just to be safe, better safe than sorry, Let's take that as a motion to add an addition to make sure that it's officially done and approved by the board. So I, I know, I'm, Madam Chair, I'm noting that uh, to uh, that the minutes as written uh, must include the attachments uh, of uh, Commissioners Jones and Richard's statement and the two articles uh, that were presented at the last meeting. Do I have that correct? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Well, Commissioner Cancel, I mean, you brought it up. And 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 my August 4th email um, included the minutes, the two statements, and both articles. And that went out to the entire board on August 4th. Right, but obviously there's confusion. So to make sure it's part of the official record, let's just better safe than sorry. Yeah. I'll second the motion. Who made the motion? Commissioner Cancel? Yeah, who made the motion? I thought it was you. Um, well, I asked, I asked um, at the very bottom of the minutes, it says attachments to these minutes. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Joe's statement and article, Commissioner Richard's statement. But there's there's not an attachment. Um, I didn't make a motion, but I'm happy to make it now for us to add those attachments that are supposed to be there uh, according to our minutes. Okay, I'll second. You want to vote count? Or you want to? Uh, yeah. Want to vote? What, what are you doing? I'm confused. Uh, chair, the director Leeper is pulling up her tally of the names to call the roll call. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, um, Commissioner, uh, this is. Uh, a, I have a question before the roll call, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, okay. there may be discussion okay. on this. Yes, There's probably but, discussion. So I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that's quite all right. Well, I was just thinking. I did. Okay, the. Oh, when she leaves, it's like, you know, Samantha, I'm bewitched here. But uh, I was thinking that 
when we, I have not looked at the video of that part. So I haven't seen it. I know our minutes are different since Jeff Driscoll came, but we don't put it verbatim. So I don't know exactly what was said because I haven't, I, I, traumatizing enough to go through it, but I haven't seen that. So in the written part, I wonder how much of that is what was said. So it's going to take me a little bit to go through it. But I do have a question with that. But all right, so I'm one too who didn't uh, who didn't really get a full idea of what was said. Okay, I think I think I understand your comment to say that you're not well informed enough to vote on whether this would be an appropriate addition to the minutes. I, I'll vote for, it, but I'm just saying I didn't. I I need time to go through it, but. I'll vote on it, sure. Oh, okay, okay, see, okay. Anyone else? Okay, I'll let you go ahead with the roll, please. Yes, uh, this is a roll Rector. call vote that uh, to ensure that all art, uh, that the two newspaper articles and the two statements um, uh, be included um, to the minutes of July 17th, 2023. Commissioner Carney. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then we are up to there is no unfinished business. And the first business under new business was taken care of with uh <clears throat> Gary DePace. So now we have a series of others uh, for us to consider and to adopt. I'll let uh, commission, I'll let, uh, Madam let, Chair, excuse me. Um, we voted to make those articles attached, but you haven't yet voted for approval of the minutes. I see. I'm sorry. You Just, had a motion from. Yeah, uh, that's right. Brooks that's right. We only, vote, we only voted Jones. for the for the addition to yes. make sure that the the yes. tax sure. documents. Would you like? And yeah, let's do it again. Okay, so approval of the 2023 minutes with the uh, assurance that the articles and comments are attached. Uh, roll call vote. Chairperson Carney. Yes, I, I, I have a question. Vice right. Chairperson Cancel. Abstain. Abstain. And Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. I had a couple of questions, but yes. Okay, Commissioner Richards? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, um, Madam Chair, five yeas and one abstention. Thank you, so the minutes are approved. I know Commissioner Tarbutton still had a couple of questions. I'm sorry yeah. about that. But just to clarify, as I just to let you know what we did, we had, we had some additions, no corrections or deletions, and then the minutes are accepted as written. Oh, yeah. no, then I got, I did the wrong vote. No, 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 no. I thought we were going to do that first. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I, I say, no, I'm sorry. I didn't understand the, the motion. Okay, but let me finish. My, let, let, let me finish my clarification. Okay. What we voted on first was the addition. Right. Of the documents and for which you abstained. Yes. No, she voted yes. I, I did vote yes. Oh, okay. So you voted yes to add to have the clarifying language, but you want you voted yes for the minutes, but you want to change your vote to no. Yeah, I didn't re recognize that. I didn't see all this information. I didn't get it. I left the meeting, and so I can't vote on something. And you have the minutes here, but that's not the video. I left the video. I hadn't had the strength to go back and watch it, but no. So absolutely, no, understand. For that reason. I understand. I think that we can, without objection. I think we can, with that clarification, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we can change that for the commissioner's uh, true feelings, which are a vote no on the minutes. Yes, I have. Nobody's, uh, nobody's I have, correcting me, so I'm not wrong. All right, thank you. I'm glad we got we got that one then taken care of. And did okay. you want to answer my question I had about the, the, the meeting, the, those minutes? Well, well, I suppose, but they're not really relevant now, but... Uh, and I'm sorry, I didn't hear you having more questions about the minutes. I did. I'm sorry. They are they are already accept uh, approved. That, um, that's fine. But my question is, 
when did people, did, did uh, uh, the Councilor Cassell give permission for the chair and the ED to send copies of his email or whatever the case may be? Did he give a, a permission for that to be used for other people? I think it was, we never got to address it, but I'm just wondering if, if he did that. And then secondly, how did the other commissioners go about being asked to submit? I wasn't asked, I wouldn't have done it anyway. Uh, to ask to make comments regarding <laughs> what, uh, what he said. And again, I don't know it because I didn't listen. So did you get permission for, for folks to do this? And did you orchestrate like having meetings with talk with people to have them get in and put in a re report and their written comments? <clears throat> Oh, well, okay, first of all, I don't think that that's something we can, I'll just say answer for myself, no and no. Okay. And I don't think that that's something that we can, I'm going to go to Attorney O'Connor. I, I want to hear what Jeff, because oh, it was directed at Jeff. My no, question I agree, Jeff. this is the minutes, it's additions and subtractions and, and changes to the minutes, whether you agree with the minutes or not, it's really just a narrative, a summary <laughs> of what happened at the meeting, nothing more, nothing less. So I think we're done with this agenda item. Thank you, attorney. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you have something that you wanted to note, Commissioner Jones? I see, as soon as I said it, his hand went down, but go ahead. Well. Um, I just want to follow Attorney O'Connor, um, but as far as myself, um, I wrote a I wrote a statement and I requested that it be added to the minutes myself. Nobody told me to do it on my own. Nobody nobody solicited a written statement. I did it on my own. That's what I do. It's part of my job. I write statements, position papers. I saw this as just more of the same. That's all. And I saw two articles in the Boston Globe that I thought were directly relevant to what we're dealing with here on this housing authority. And I thought it was a useful historical background for everybody to have. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, it's good to know these things. I, I wasn't a part of whoever, so I had no idea. Thank you. Can, mm, I do want to say something. I don't well, appreciate you know, what I know saying. we want to do some back and forth, but yes. I now see Commissioner Richards with her hand raised and I'll allow it. Uh, yes, I just wanted to reiterate, nobody asked me to write any comments. We, uh, as you all know, regularly comment on uh, stuff before the board. And um, no, I did that on my own. And I requested, uh, as did Commissioner Jones, that it be part of the record. Oh, uh, I've never had the comments. OK, but... so those questions have been made and answered. And I'm not going to have further questions on this matter. The minutes have been approved. Thank you. And I'll go on to then new business. And that item, scrolling through my many tabs, aha, will be the first item under unfinished business. And that is, I will, we will let uh, com uh, Director Lieber, please read the resolution as presented. Yes, this is resolution number 202307, which is to adopt the 2023 federal income limits as published by HUD. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority adopts the new HUD income limits for federally aided family, elderly, and Section 8 housing programs, per the HUD directive by utilizing low income limits for its family and elderly housing program and very low income limits for its Section 8 program. By adoption, the Northampton Housing Authority adopts the 2023 income limits for its programs as published by HUD. Extremely low limits are utilized to comply with HUD income targeting requirements and that it should be, uh, that it should be fully adopted and take effect September 1st, 2023. Okay, could we have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Richards. Okay, so some discussion on this matter, please. Any clarifications, uh, Director Lieber? Nope, the, it, all the income limits uh, changed in the favor of residents. Uh, so um, I, I think there's, um, and we're required to do it by HUD. So I think that we, um, we, that I think that you guys should accept them. 
Okay. I'm not seeing any uh, questions from, from commissioners regarding this. Then I'll ask, please, the director to call the roll. Sure. Um, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. I'll abstain, thank you. Commissioner Richards. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, uh, five uh, yeas and one abstention. Okay, then that resolution is approved. We have the next one in the lineup. Yes. Uh, this is resolution 202308, which is the certification of the 2023 Section 8 CMAP. Uh, the, the, whereas the Northampton Housing Authority offers, operates a Section 8 leased housing program funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and whereas HUD requires annual submission of a Section 8 Management Assessment Program, CMAP, certification, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority does hereby adopt Resolution 202308, incorporating the submission of the required documentation into the form of HUD Form 52648 for fiscal year 2023, and certifies that it has received no evidence to indicate serious deficiency performance by the NHA, which could cast doubt on its capacity to operate and own housing funded by federal government and certifies that it has adopted policies so as to operate its programs in compliance with federal law and regulation. And further that the board authorizes the executive director and chairperson to sign the HUD form 52648 on behalf of the agency. Okay, could I hear a motion please? Motion, motion to, to approve. approve. Second. I heard, uh, I think two people, I think Commissioner Brooks and then Commissioner- yeah, I'll second it. Okay, we're first. okay. then that was Commissioner Richards. Moved and seconded to approve the resolution. Okay, I'll ask, there's any questions, comments? Uh, hearing none? I'll ask. Uh, well, uh, oh, yes, please. Was, yes, was, please, Commissioner Tarbutton. No, that's okay. I was just looking for it, but go right ahead. Take your time. If I know. No, no, no. no, 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 I, no I've, I've no, taken no, enough. No, I've taken enough air time. Please just go through. I'll vote no on it, and that, that will be enough said. Okay. Madam Chair, would you like me to call the roll? Please. Thank you. Uh, yes, on resolution 2023-08, which is certification of the fiscal year 2023 Section 8 CMAP. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. I'm going to say no. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, five yeas and one nay. Okay, that motion is approved to certify the Section 8 CMAP. And that brings us to item number five, which is the open meeting law violation and resolution. No, uh, Madam Chair, you skipped uh, the motion to allow the executive director and chair to uh, execute the wage match forms. Pardon me. Item number four. Allow yes. the executive director and chair to execute wage match forms. Uh, that is the actual resolution. Am I correct? Yes. I'm going to read it again since I just read it. But yeah, it's a, ask, it's a motion. I will ask if there is a motion to put on the floor to allow the executive director and chair to execute the wage match form. Motion to uh, approve. Motion made by Commissioner Brooks. Second. And se seconded Commissioner Richards to allow the executive director and chair to execute the wage match have, form. Madam Chair, I have a question about that. Yes, so now we move into discussion. 
Okay, thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Well, the uh, part that I just uh, object to is that, why is it that it's the ED and the uh, chair? I worry about that because there was an agreement with the ED and the chair being part of a management team that went over to East Hampton and not the board. And I it's asked particularly, can I finish? Um, can I can you talk? Please, we'll, we'll do one at a time, Commissioner. We'll Director Lee, we'll do one at a time. Please. Okay. I specifically asked when I went to the NARO uh, convention, I said, what are the duties of the chair? Because it seemed like the chairs that I had had a lot of stuff. I asked the chair that this person could come to a meeting. I asked the chair. The chair said this. The chair said that. And he said the chair is to regulate the meeting. So I'm just wondering if you can show me where you get this broad power to be able to do this and not the board. I'm just confused by that because I, 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 I don't think it's right. In light of what happened in East, at East Hampton. Okay, is that a question for me or for no? It's a comment. Connor, Attorney O'Connor, or for the no, 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 Attorney O'Connor. I have no questions for you. Um, well, I, may, I may regarding the. Oh, uh, okay. I'm sure. I'm sure. He's yeah. Very good at this. So, um, no, I just uh, don't understand why. And if you could show me where, not kind of tell me, but show me where, give me a document that you have these powers along with the ED to make these decisions. And okay, and not no, no. We understand your question, Commissioner Tarbutton, and I don't want to have a back and forth with three people. I also see that Commissioner Cancel has his hand raised. So why don't we take a portion of your question, then go back to Commissioner Cancel, and then do your other follow-ups, if, if that's okay? I would just leave the floor to him. He can he can. Oh, no, you go ahead and start. You, you had your hand up first, please. I'm asking if you can send me that information where that is permitted, because I asked in a narrow meeting, and they said the chair position is to run the meeting. So I wonder, can you show me where that is permitted? That the that the ED and the chair can go make it's these decisions on the form. I, you know, I can't see that. You can send it to me, please. It's in your board package. It's on the form. Okay. Can you resend it to me, please? Oh, you may be blocked. If you could, um, no, you, you're on the uh, you're on the the form. It's on this uh, uh, laptop. So send it to me, please. Thanks. Oh, okay. Commissioner Cancel? Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner Cancel. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do actually have questions uh, uh, about the, uh, the amount of power that the chair shares with the uh, director, uh, particularly. Um, in uh, regards to previous um, uh, deliberations. But tonight, my question is, uh, well, first of all, let me just say that we are voting to give the chair authorization to do this tonight. She doesn't previously have that authorization. So let me make that clear. Uh, but what I do want to, uh, if, if uh, the director can go into a little bit more detail about this resolution, that would be really helpful. So the department of um, the, it's used to formerly DHCD um, requires, so it's it's not even a, 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 a that, it, that another uh, commissioner could sign. They require the executive director and whomever is the chairperson to sign off um, uh, and it's in regards to housing notices 202303 and 201916, which indicates that all authorized employees in the housing authority have read and signed a wage match acknowledgement regarding confidentiality of information and the DOR disclosure of security training for safeguarding information, and that we've we we've kept them on file. Um, and so the actual form itself, um, which is attachment A uh, V3, it says um, to the public housing notice um, has, you know, it's a it's their form and it has a place for the executive director to sign and it has a place for the board chair to sign. So a question to oh, wait, the... wait a minute. One, I, I think we're still dealing with Commissioner Cancel's questions. Did I answer your, your question adequately, Commissioner Cancel? Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, let's go back to Commissioner Tarbutton, then to Commissioner. Well, actually, if you don't mind, Commissioner Tarbutton, 
we should go around for people who haven't had a chance oh. and then back. So first I see is Commissioner Richards with her hand raised, please. Uh, yes, I just wanted to say that my interpretation of this is that number one, it's a formality, but it's just a check uh, to make sure that everything is filed uh, and signed properly because it really is uh, under the direction of the executive director. But having the chair act on our behalf saves us a special meeting um, and, and that's what the res resolution as presented to us calls for. And there are many instances, uh, including time and that, that the chair actually uh, uh, works with the executive director to sign. So I don't think it's, I just wanna assure people, it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's, it is a, uh, under the auspices of the chair to support the executive director uh, by making sure that all is signed and filed. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Commissioner Tarbutton, please. And then Commissioner Cancel again. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that it is asked of the former DHCD because I've seen things that are not, that I don't know if the former DHCD said, go be a management team and get the, manage or take over East Hampton. <clears throat> so I just think that there's these things that go on and I'm not quite sure of it. And fine, I think that's a wonderful idea. I'm just asking clarification and thanks for taking out the time to uh, help with that. And uh, that's all I'll say on that. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Commissioner Cancel, please. Uh, yeah, I just want to clarify my uh, question. So uh, my question wasn't about process. I'm, I'm all up for uh, authorizing the, the chair and the director to uh, make this decision. Um, it's, it was more about the content. Uh, so for people that are watching that don't know what match form is, that's kind of what I was what I was uh, hoping to get uh, a little information about that particular um, uh, topic. So the wage match is, uh, like I had said, it's it, it's we're signing their document, ensuring them that we have the confident, all the proper forms signed by people that have access to confidential information with, of residents and applicants, um, and and that we have, uh, you know, we've had the appropriate employees sign them, which we have, um, yeah. and that we have them on file. That's what this is about. Uh, I have a question regarding that, Chair. Can I ask the ED? I'm not sure that Commissioner Cancel is finished. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Director Lee. You're welcome. Um, okay. okay, so I'm sorry. Then uh, yes, yes, I guess I'll go back then to Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Thank you for doing everything to be uh, on point, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. I appreciate that, Chair, Madam Chair. My question is okay, I, I can get that. Uh, is uh, 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 Ed Leeper? I'm confused. Uh, I hear that, but there was something that just I'm getting in my mind that just happened here, where there were some things uh, taped to the door, but that was for residents. So what you're talking about has nothing to do with the residents. This is just for staff to get confidential information on us residents. Is that what you? Is that what that is? No. Okay. This is the wage match acknowledgement form saying that the board acknowledges and the executive director acknowledges that the three documents that or that the two documents that require um, are required for any employees who can see and have access to the confidential information of residents and applicants have done so and they have and we have it on file and we must certify that it's done that's what this is about and what you're referring to um, was not um anything to do with any confidential information okay then i don't see any other questions i can ask then director leeper to please call the roll Yes, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Uh, this motion is to allow the executive director and chair to uh, sign the and execute the wage match form. Uh, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. 
Uh, may I come back to Commissioner Jones? Uh, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to abstain from this. I got information about a former resident. Thank you. Thank you. And that okay. Com Commissioner Richards. Commissioner Richards. You're muted if you can't hear us. Commissioner Jones, are you back? Yes, I vote yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Sorry, I was muted. That's okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, uh, with five yeas and one abstention. That uh, motion is approved. Thank, Thank you. you. So the next item on our list of new business is um, the item number five, open meeting law violation and resolution as recommended by the Attorney General's office. The motion there is that the board requests the commissioner who violated OML to attend open meeting law training and provide documentation of attendance. Is there someone wants to put this on the floor for discussion? Yes, uh, I'll, make, I'll make a motion um, to uh, take the Attorney General's recommendation and ask uh, Commissioner Cancel to uh, attend that training. So as worded to request that the board request the commissioner who attended mm -hmm. OM, who violated OML to attend open meeting law training and provide documentation of attendance. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. And now this matter is open for discussion. And the first hand I see, although typically we go to those that make the motion, but I'll go to Commissioner Tarbutton. Thank you. Uh, my question is on this. Um, and you're talking to a commissioner who goes to all the meetings every month. Did you as the chair and the ED make this motion for him to go or did the whole board? Is that what we're doing at the whole board requiring? Because did he get a notice about this beforehand or is this now that he needs to go for September? I'm curious, I'm, I'm confused. Since the motion was made, and seconded, it was the motion, the person asking and putting it before the board is Commissioner Richards, I believe, yes. seconded yes. by Commissioner Brooks. And typically then they have the opportunity to explain why they're putting this before the board for discussion. And then I don't know if my question was answered. Um, are you, who are you asking? I guess I'm asking the ED, did you, was this, discussed beforehand or is this the first time we're hearing about this now? It, Madam Chair, would you like me to address? Yeah, I, I mean, sure. I don't know that the question is relevant to be asked of the ED. I mean, I, I it would probably be more relevant to be asked of the chair. Well, I'd like to yeah. ask the ED and you can answer it as well. Madam Chair, well, would you, you like you, me to answer? Whatever you want. I mean, I think, that I, I think that I will intercede and say that I heard as chair, heard, okay. I heard through email from various commissioners, and I'm not going to name people, that doesn't matter. The fact is there was concern that the Northampton Housing Authority had committed open meeting law violation. The Housing Authority had, because when any one commissioner does, it is really the violation of the authority. So in the, in the efforts to self-report, having heard that concern from a couple of board members and in the spirit of self-reporting, mm -hmm. we self-reported that we, the Northampton Housing Authority, had violated open meeting law. I see. Okay. And they sent, and they sent the communication that you see attached. They who? the attorney general's office that handles open meeting law violations. Okay, all right. So when you read through that communication from the AG's office, yeah. it was a communication to the housing authority. Okay. And you'll see that that communication was directed to the executive director, but that was because under my um, request, the issue was brought to the attention of the attorney general's office 
Okay. So that it wasn't brought to the attention of the attorney general's office by some member of the public as a complaint. We yeah. did not file it as a complaint. We filed it as an acknowledgement of our open meeting law violation and how we intend to address it, which is what is required by the AG's office. I, I get it. I get it. Like I, like I told you, I go to those meetings once a month, including the uh, oh, uh, open meeting laws with the Massachusetts municipal employees. Very, very helpful. So I go, I just didn't know if we as a board decide this for a fellow commissioner and why just one commissioner, not, why not everybody? Why not all the commissioners? Well, that <laughs> will be, part, something. I, I, excuse me, Commissioner Tarbutton, that will be part of our discussion. We have uh, a motion on the floor. Not, we, have, we, have a, we, have, we, we have a motion on the floor for discussion made by Commissioner Richards, seconded by Commissioner Brooks. And I'm part we of that discussion. Amend, yes, and as part of that discussion, okay. we can we can amend the motion. Okay. We can ask that the makers of the motion consider that maybe not just the person who is uh, made the open meeting law violation, but rather all members of the board. I mean, there's room for you to go ahead and state your opinion and state what you would suggest that we do. Okay, because I have more along those lines. Go ahead, but somebody- Let's, take, let's, let's actually no, no, no. take all of yours up front. No, I would like, I gotta look it up because I'm seeing something, but I'd like, okay. for, I'd like to pass it over to- and I'm going to actually, I'm going to make, I'm going to pass it over to the maker of, of the motion, because typically that's done when someone makes a motion. So I'll pass it to the maker of the motion in the second to speak. And then I see Commissioner Cancel third has his hand up. So we'll all have a, plenty of time. We got the rest of the night to talk about this. Okay. So um, Commissioner yes. Tarbutton would like to defer now. So to Commissioner Richards, please. Um. Yeah, I just wanted to say a couple of things. And, and the reason I made the motion uh, was pretty simple. Uh, first of all, um, and Chairperson Carney, you did make it um, uh, that we self-reported, which is commendable. And it's not uh, at all unusual. Things like this happen. It's not really uh, horrible. Uh, because the uh, remedy was to attend, uh, you know, a meeting <laughs> on open um, open meeting, and I would say, you know, anybody is probably welcome to attend that, and maybe we should, but we self-reported because it was the right thing to do, uh, not waiting for someone else out of the public to catch it, and uh -huh. um, so I. You know, I uh, wholeheartedly accept the recommendation of the Attorney General, and I hope that Commissioner Cancel will um, uh, have a good training. <laughs> mm. Then I see Commissioner Cancel's hand raised. Oh, wow. Okay. So, first of all, um, I really think it's ridiculous that y'all continued the meeting uh, after, um, after I wasn't in the meeting anymore. Um, the reason for that uh, email to the board was to explain what happened. Um, and according uh, to, by the way, I do wanna read the uh, attorney general's letter, which does not recommend that I do training. Um, I will say though, um, that I will take any and all training uh, that I can um, because um, uh, education is important. Education is information, information is power. Um, and so I will not only attend uh, open meeting law violation training, I, I'm gonna uh, attend other uh, trainings that actually uh, uh, Commissioner Tarbo and has suggested in the past, and I just haven't had the time, the time to um, uh, to attend uh, some of these uh, trainings. But first of all, it is my opinion that it was not a open meeting violation, um, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, and we actually learned this in our training uh, with um, 
with attorney, uh, with the attorney, um, I forget his name now. Jeff uh, Driscoll. Yes. Um, and let me just read y'all uh, what here says. Uh, this is this is meetings of public bodies and what constitutes as deliberation. The open meeting law defines deliberation as an oral and written communication through any medium, including electronic mail, between or among a quorum of public body on any public business with its jurisdiction. Now, this is the part that we really need to pay attention to. Distribution of a meeting agenda, scheduling, or procedural information, uh, which is what what that was, what my email was, it, it had to do with scheduling and procedural information or reports or documents that may be discussed at a meeting is often helpful to public body members when preparing for upcoming meetings. So in order for us to prepare for this meeting tonight, that was, that's, that was what my email was all about saying, hey, I dropped out, my phone died, and I wasn't able to get back until now. Can we continue the topic next month? Now, for some reason, the chair and the director decided that it was more important to discipline a board member than to actually consider talking about the topic about the member that was not there in the, in the, in the, in the, in the next meeting. Y'all did not even consider that. Y'all did not put that in the agenda again. None of you had the decency to say to yourselves, wow, this person is not here. We really shouldn't be talking about him, we sh especially because he was the person who asked for this item to be put on the agenda. So Commissioner Tarbun was 100% right in request for a continuance of that item. And none of you, none of you thought that would be important. That's really, that's, that's kind of gross. In my opinion, in my eyes, wow. And, and a lot of you have served in many different boards. I definitely have never seen that. Um, but um, back to the topic here, which is open meeting law violation. It does not state anywhere that I violated uh, open meeting law. In fact, the letter that we received from the AG uh, also did not indicate that I violated anything. Um, my mouse uh, uh, froze here because I wanted to read, unless somebody can read that Please. Attorney General's um, uh, letter, it does not say anywhere in there that they think we violated the law. It does not say in there that they recommend anything other than what we think as a body and how we want to uh, correct. Uh, well, here's, here's the letter. Kara, thank you for contacting the Division of Open Government. Please know that there is no requirement for public bodies to formally self-report potential open meeting law violations to our office. Instead, we encourage public bodies to take corrective action on their own if they believe they discover they may have violated the OML. In situations where a public body or a member of a public body improperly deliberated outside of a posted meeting by email, we recommend that the communication be made uh, publicly available, either by reading it out loud at a future meeting or by acknowledging the communication and attaching it to the minutes of a future meeting. I did not, there was no deliberation uh, with my email. It was simply a communication about scheduling. So in my, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, there was no uh, open meeting law violation. And as far as I'm concerned, that was completely unnecessary. Um, it's a, a complete uh, misuse of the time uh, that could be used to be taking care of operations, daily operations. Um, furthermore, uh, I would like to request that in the future um, that we uh, call for an executive session to discuss employees' um, matters. Uh, I understand if I'm, 
please correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that just like uh, staff members uh, on the day-to-day -day operation, I'm also an employee of the housing authority, in which case we don't really want to start a, uh, a precedence of talking about employees or potential violations or potential uh, uh, correction uh, to somebody's uh, employment um, in a uh, public session. Today, actually, I welcome this because I wanted the opportunity uh, to address this, but I think we really need to be a little bit more careful about how we handle these personal matters and matters of personnel, uh, which is the re one of the reasons why, um, uh, and I'll discuss that in, 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 when the item comes up. Um, one of the reasons why I suggested that uh, we uh, reinstate uh, other committees that that we had. Um, but uh, just to wrap it up here, I do not believe I violated open meeting law. I do not believe that whole exchange was necessary. Um, and I am grossed out by the fact that none of you thought it would be important uh, to uh, postpone uh, that topic until the next meeting. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. I saw first Commissioner Richards, then I see Commissioner Tarbutton. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Tarbutton, did you have your hand raised prior? I most definitely did, yes, thank you. I am so sorry. Commissioner That's Richards, right. is your hand still raised from the prior yes. comment? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm I sorry, I don't understand. Are you is your hand raised presently for an intention to comment? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so would you mind, well, wait first, Commissioner Tarbutton? Not at all. Thank you, both of you. Um, I just want to say, firstly, I think it's really commendable, in a sense, when people want to report uh, open meeting violations. This board, with the lawyer intact, has been fined for, there's a video that says they admit to open meeting law. So, and they did say training, training, training. Uh, my issue is that it was targeted with one particular commissioner. And guys, I don't know if you see it, but you're targeting. I'm a target too. I don't know if it's because we brown and black people. I don't know. I know you'll shake your head. No, but it certainly looks like that. So I just think this was punitive. And if you remember the training that we had with Jeff Driscoll, I did that once, uh, re hit reply all. I got big fingers. You know, if I do it on my phone, I hit, re uh, re and I said, I'm going to go. You all heard it. It was there, except the lawyer who says he was there, but he didn't hear this when he said, I said, I'm going to go self-report um, self -report that I violated. And he goes, why? I said, well, I hit all. And he's like, that's a non-issue. That's a misstep. So y'all heard that, or you didn't hear it all. But so, but that's the thing though. I think that you're making this up and then the, uh, the person who, cause I don't pull rank, but we are the one who oversees the ED. So the ED is now saying, you better go to the group and I'm gonna get the rest of the board to say you have to do it too. So there's something wrong with that fundamentally. And I have to say, because you people, uh, you people, I am so sorry, because most of the board members are really sticklers about open meeting law. It was violated actually a year ago today it was violated by Kara when she uh, mentioned two residents and their location, which is a violation of the open meeting law. All of you were there, including the attorney. Why was why was Commissioner Tarba unmuted? Tar Commissioner, you are muted. Thank you for letting me know. I'm Kara probably did that too, but I'm just saying y'all violated it a year ago. Kara <laughs> did twice, and not one person has done anything. Not the lawyer, not the chair with all this experience, not the former chair. You violated open meeting law. She named two residents by name and where they lived. That's a, you heard. That's why the person who trained us said y'all minutes are messed up, and y'all. So uh, now I can file an OML on that because none of you would. So I, 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 I'm going to interject here and say that would be the appropriate venue. Yeah, okay. Because um, I have yeah, to let you know first. I have to let you know first as a chair. Yes, please. But that would be the appropriate venue rather than using the discussion portion right now. And it's true, it is a very heated issue. So people, a lot of people have many things to say. So um, 
I'm not sure if you're finished with that comment, but no, I, wasn't. I think reference, referencing the year ago open meeting law violations yeah. requires a different response than talking okay. about it here. Well, I just, I, I'm just disappointed because you've been on city council before. You have a other person on city council. We have a labor guy. Y'all know this better than me. I'm learning about this day and night. I'm grabbing for learning. And as you know, paying for it myself. And y'all let that go. Like y'all didn't see that. But you caught him trying to say why he wasn't in a meeting. <laughs> Guys, come on, please. Everybody needs these meetings. I still don't. I'm going understand. to turn. I'm going to turn to Commissioner Brooks because he hasn't had an opportunity. Okay. And then, please I, I, I still don't understand, Mr. Cancel, how when your phone died, you can go to another phone or find some way to contact the board or uh, the di director to say that we're not going to be in attendance at the rest of the meeting. Explain that. The contract. Um, then, I'm going to say, email. hold on one second, Commissioner Cancel. I'm just reminding people that all questions, well, not to seem so formal, but just think of them, they're coming to me, and then I'll direct them to commit. Um, okay, I'll direct it to you. No, you but just so you know, so, but I understand, Commissioner Brooks, that's a question for Commissioner Cancel, and please, if you don't mind, Commissioner Cancel. Uh, Commissioner Brooks, that's precisely what I did. As soon as as soon as I was able to get the phone going, I emailed the the entire board because at that point the meeting had ended. I did try to get into the meeting. There was no one there at that point, and so I emailed uh, the board. Okay, I was also um, just to give you a little bit more background. I was also uh, getting prepared to travel that very night. So the fact that I took time. Uh, for the meeting in the first place, um, uh, it's it was a big deal to me. Uh, but trust me, I did not want to be missing that meeting. I asked for that topic to be brought up. So the last thing I wanted to do um, was be disconnected uh, from the meeting. I will say, though, uh, that it taught me a big lesson about being prepared, okay, about having can, backup. Can you, can you learn something? You learn something by your own mistake. You know, I, didn't know, I, I, didn't. Just, I just don't understand how when your phone goes dead, why you can't take it and plug it into another power source or into the power source and use the phone as is in the power source. If you don't have a power source, that's the problem. Okay. okay. And if I, okay, if, I so somebody I else's, if I borrow somebody else's phone, they don't have Tara's number in it. They don't have okay. okay. Number. I don't do know anybody's number forth. by heart. I, I okay. hear I hear you, Commissioner Richards. I hear you. You know, um, I understand that there's uh, uh the issue here. What well, let's try not there's obviously a concern that Commissioner Brooks has brought up, and there's some extenuating circumstances that are being brought to our attention. Those can certainly be brought into mind as we consider how to move forward, but it's all about moving forward. Are there things that you would recommend instead? I mean, I, I wanna give other people too a chance to chime in if they haven't had a chance. And um, I'd ask Commissioner Jones, his hand isn't raised, but I think he's trying to. Yeah, I can, um, I can say a couple of things, but um, I don't think that topic on the agenda was unique to um, Commissioner Cancel. So I think the discussion should have happened as it did. And this board goes through meetings on a regular basis where uh, one or two or uh, maybe more people are not present for the meeting. And we don't call the meeting off unless we have a lack of a quorum. Now, the way this was brought to my attention is I'm seeing an email from one commissioner to all the other commissioners. So the quorum threshold has already been reached right there. And that's one of the things that we're taught that we shouldn't do. And I can also say that when um, I go to <clears throat> say community preservation committee um, events, like we, they're gonna, 
dedicate something that just got finished or whatever. Um, as commissioners, we do not huddle up together. We might wave, you know, and say, how are you doing? But we do not want to give the appearance of any possible discussion because there's um, a potential quorum uh, gathered at a, at a given event. So we don't do it. So when I looked at this and the reason I, I think Commissioner Tarbutton makes a good point about that, that past mistake with people's names. I'm like, yeah, let's look into it. But the reason this latest event um, stands out um, so strongly is because it showed up right on my computer screen, right out front and center, there it was. So there wasn't any chance to potentially miss something. It was right there. And I'll just leave it at that, thank you. Commissioner Richards, please. And then Commissioner Cancel. Yeah, I mean, I agree with uh, the points that uh, uh, Commissioner Jones has made. And I just wanted to say too, if I, I know I was late to last, um, our last meeting, and that was noted in the minutes. And if I miss a meeting, I expect that the board, if there is a quorum, to continue. I don't want to make this any bigger deal than it is. I think we get reminded all the time when Kara sends out an email, do not reply and all of this. So let's just go with, uh, we turned it in, because I suppose, because it was a possible violation. And the attorney general came back with a recommendation, which is very reasonable. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Commissioner Richards. Commissioner Kessel? Uh, yeah, again, I still don't see anywhere on the response from the attorney general um, that the recommendation is to send me to um, uh, open meeting law training. Uh, and again, I will say that I'll take any and all uh, training um, that I can. And I do agree that actually we all need this training. Um, in, in fact, um, I discovered a violation right in the email that Kara sent out. Kara sent out an email on Sunday, July 16th is it did say, please do not reply all to this email, um, but she forwarded a whole lot of information that was discussed between me and her. And um, in my opinion, this is not a board, uh, it's not the board package. It's not uh, anything that has to do with an up upcoming meeting. It's actually forwarding an email to all of the rest of the board members and actually two senior staff members um, about uh, a conversation between me and her. I don't think there was a violation in the conversation between me and her, but once she forwarded that email to everybody else, that's an open meeting law uh, violation. Um, and I don't think everybody on this board is clear on what open meeting violation is. And it's in, it's in that spirit that I ask that actually we all go to this training. And additionally, I want to make a motion that we look into anti-racist training. Um, I wholeheartedly believe that that's what we need uh, as, as a first step, as a first step. Um, and I certainly agree that we need uh, diversity, equity, uh, and inclusion training, um, but uh, they, they are some, um, there are some signs here uh, for me that really uh, we should be thinking about anti-racist work. Okay, I wanna see if we've heard from, from everybody on the board, at least who's had the opportunity, but I see, has everybody, why doesn't everybody who hasn't had an opportunity raise their hand so I can at least identify those? But they don't want to talk. Uh, I'm sorry, was that you, Commissioner Tarbutton? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was on mute. Maybe they don't want to talk. It's very interesting. I, 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 mm, I wish you would do this when we have things for the agenda items and stuff, get everybody to participate.
pretty much everybody did. Okay, so what I want to do is just make sure that all the commissioners have had a chance, because I have a big screen, you know, we all we all struggle with that. And I do, and but I still, I do see your hand, Commissioner Tarbutton. Would you like to say something else? Yes, I would, and thank you for allowing me. Um, I just, uh, I, I have to say this again, as I said, this was mean-spirited and it was targeted against this him. And I have to tell you, and I have to say, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Jones, I don't think you were in that meeting when that happened with me twice. Uh, the, uh, not It happened twice with the ED doing that. I don't think you were there. Um, but I, so I, I, I and I, I want to say, I do respect some of the things that you say. And I wanted to say that in the last meeting, I never got a chance to do it. You're respected in the work that you do. And I just asked in the work that I do and probably couldn't say, we want to be respected too. And not ridicule when we are asking the question and, oh, you know, we don't want that. So I give you that respect and we expect the same thing. But regarding this, I think that, um, I have been to these trainings and I did it. I did it too. You didn't report me back then. I did it by mistake. I hit reply out and you didn't report me. I just think that this is the timing and everything that's going on. I just think this is being, we're being targeted. And a group of people who are, are dealing with residents, all different races, abilities and what, why isn't that mandated that you do that all the time instead of the two people of color begging you to do this? And you won't, if it was important, you would have done it. And so I just think that you need to, you need to look at yourselves. You can point the finger at me and the two times that one of the times that she violated by mentioning the resident, it was targeted against me. Because the resident said, when I brought the issue of her, of her calling me and asking me to vote for Marilyn Richards and not Evelyn, I mean, not uh, Elizabeth Silver, she did that then because it was against me. And then the other one was she put the name because they were praising her. So, and nobody did anything and you approved those minutes even if you weren't in that uh, meeting, you approve those minutes because it has it right there. So you're just as guilty, if not worse. Do your job. We had an oath, all of us. Uh, the oath isn't to the ED, it's to the board, it's to the residents, it's to housing, it's to the community. Follow it and don't just, this is what people of color talk about all the time about looking up, people looking at you with a microscope, eyes looking right at every little thing you do. Who you be seeing? Who you talking to? And if you talk, if you together, you got to be talking about this stuff. I mean, talking about us. Remember when the lawyer said he didn't want people to go to that thing over there in Hampshire uh, College because the probability of two or three uh, commissioners uh, breaking all of them up. It ain't even happen. Thank goodness, uh, Commissioner Jones said we do this all the time. We don't have to talk about you. We got other things in our life that we deal with that are important, but we are looked at and viewed, and we are all supposed to be equal, and I'm just asking that we be treated equally, because we are not guilty, all of you, four of you at least, and that's it. Thank you, Commissioner Tagerwatton, and Commissioner Cancel. Yes, please. I um, know this is going to go on the record. Um, uh, written record, uh, this uh, OML violation self-report. Um, but I want to, for the benefit of those that are from the community that are watching, not want to read my email, what I sent out. And what I sent out was, my apologies. My phone died and I'm just able to plug in now. I hope we can revisit the topic at the next meeting. I had a lot that I wanted to respond to tonight. That was my email, um, just for the record. Are there any other comments by commissioners? Uh, do I see any other hands raised? Okay, just forgive me. I just wanna make sure I'm not overlooking someone then. All right, then I will speak finally on this, on this topic. It, this has been a culmination of a, a series of things. First, there were um, emails months ago, a couple months ago, a few months ago, followed by remarks by the chair to those questions raised in the email, um, which admittedly, since I'm the chair, um, 
probably exhibited some uh, confusion and some surprise, I guess, was a lighter way of saying it. But um, having just come two weeks out of open heart surgery, I'm sure my uh, many other things impacted my blood boiling. I just want to say that there were a number of things that happened at that meeting. There was an, a, a, a legitimate request from Commissioner Cancel to be able to respond, but there was no opportunity there and then. What there was in order to stay within the parameters of our meeting was the opportunity that um, Commissioner Cancel asked for, seconded Commissioner Tarbutton, which was board response. It's not typically something we take up in terms of, because we do business, whatever, but it seemed important enough since I had broke, brought it up and opened the door to allow for board response. And then there was well attendance at the next meeting. I was, there was actually all of us there. And for a number of unfortunate reasons, um, Commissioner Cancel first you know, fell off the call uh, there wasn't any communication about there being an anticipated problem or any of that, but I know that when the issue came up, I tried, and people can't shoot me for trying, I tried to see, can we wait to see what's going on with Commissioner Cancel? Can, can someone make a call or a text? Maybe we can all, you know, use the loo, whatever. I mean, I think I was really trying to make sure that there, all attempts were made to communicate and find out if something was up and should we wait? And we actually had a discussion about should we wait then because there were a couple of other topics. And as I recall, there was a discussion about should we go back and consider the meeting minutes since we agreed to wait on, there was one particular thing that we did, I think continue and wait. Well, we decided not to based on the fact that we had just passed the minutes without Commissioner Cancel being present, but that as we understood, given the fact that four people had voted in favor of the minutes, it wouldn't change the vote in any event. So given that, and then, then the next item, um, we went through, so there was already discussion about whether to continue after some, and we tried again a couple of times. So when we got to the topic of um, the board response to the chair's remarks, um, well, Commissioner Tarbutton immediately said and assumed, well, we're not dealing with that because he's not here. But the fact was we had just dealt with four other items without Commissioner Cancel present. The argument was made, not by me, I'm the chair, I just run, the argument was made that we have the quorum present. And I basically, I said then, and I offered to Commissioner Tarbutton, is that something you'd like to make as a motion? There was some strange back and forth, and then Commissioner Tarbutton made a very kind of sing-songy motion, if you remember, and I, I was just very surprised by that. And I didn't hear a second. And I think I waited a good long time, but I think more people <laughs> were trying to get their jaws off the floor. It was very odd and very, the tension was there. And when there was no second, there was no motion to continue this item to the next meeting. And Commissioner Tarbutton left. It was unfortunate. I felt like there is, there was, and still is, an opportunity for Commissioner Cancel to give his board member response to the chair's remarks. We didn't make it an item on this agenda, but it could happen at any time. The, the, of course, you the, the written responses that other people chose to submit and prepare, you know, those could be submit, submitted as well, as well as even having another, but, it does not change the fact that when the email was received at 11 o'clock at night, you know, some people who had already, you know, wondered, and there were a couple of things in that statement. I had a lot to talk about. That in and of itself is saying you have an opinion and you want to share it and you want it on the next agenda. 
And it's not something that is, is so in terms of, you can call it picayune, but that's why we reached out to the AG and they didn't call it picayune. It wasn't, we had already said, this isn't something that warrants discipline as it's been characterized, but it's not discipline, it's opportunity. And maybe even for all of us, if you wanna change that motion, it doesn't change the fact that the onus is put on us. And yes, when it's been put on me before in the past, demanding that I self-report from this housing authority, particular open meeting law violations, any attempt on my part to try to get details was characterized as harassment. So end of the story, people know where they go if they suspect a violation. In this case here, we didn't suspect it. We said, look, we know you're not supposed to, it says in big red letters, do not reply all. Yes, it excludes scheduling and agendas. This was more than that. I'm going to ask now if there is someone who will call the question. Uh, I have a question. What do you mean call to question? What, what do you mean by that? Can we move to a roll call vote at this point? I have a question. I'm still in the discussion about what you said. I'll allow one more discussion from Commissioner Tarbutton as the last word. Wow. Thank you. I. It's like you. Why have that option if you cut it off? I just wanted to say. Um, with what you just said, I never, and I have the email, I never demanded anything of you. I asked you whether you're going to self-report when the ED made a comment, and you said you talked with the attorney and Kara, and y'all saw no things. And I said, okay, that's fine. Then I'll go through them. And then you, you are blocked from my personal email as well as ED. You just kept coming. To, I said, no. And I know what uh, Commissioner Cancel is saying about you raise a question with the email and it's like an attack. Da -da -da emails and sending it out to everybody and then y'all writing things together and talk. It feels like an attack. We want to engage. We're saying, can we, can we ask a question? Can we do this? We don't want to be attacked. And the thing is, I don't know how, if you were sick. I'm sorry that you had an issue with your, your, your health and I wish you all the best. But I, I think that when I'm saying that you're doing that, that's when I'm saying, if you knew this, that's a microaggression. Please learn what that is, because then you would see it there. How this board, mainly white people, couldn't say singling out Kunsale and not saying for all of us that that would be problematic. I don't know how you could not see that. And I just also want to say it's like don't exaggerate and said I was demanding because I wasn't. And I think that um, the emails I get back are gaslighting, they're deflection, just because I may disagree with something that you said and I want to ask about it. I can't, that's why I don't even put agenda items on it because it, I, I think it was a uh, former uh, uh, a chair who said that when I asked about the grievance policy on the board, that's the OML issue. Well, what, what, what does that mean? What, what? I don't get an answer with that. So I don't get that. And I think that um, I have seen this board wait for you and for Commissioner uh, Richards to come in because they voted an issue, they're waiting on y'all to come in. If I wasn't there, you, you, bye, I'm gone. And I just also want to meet, I think we have a city council person here in the office in the, in the, in the meeting there. There was an issue because I was in there, I just happened to be in there where somebody who brought up an issue, phone got disconnected. The president said, there's no way we're going to talk about this without the person here who addressed it. Y'all think that's quite fine. And so that's what I'm saying. It's like being human. I was concerned. I was like, please, Lord, I hope nothing bad happened. I, I got freaked out. So when I saw the email, so I was like, good. And I didn't notice a, a reply all. And uh, I just thought, oh, thank goodness he alive. What happened? Because I was concerned. That was the first thing I had. Concern. Not, oh, I'm going to tell off it. Because it seems petty. And y'all heard it in the same training that they would never, uh, 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 Jeff Driscoll would never a report, a uh, uh, self report when you hit all. But all of you can learn, it's just us. Cause I remember when we first got here, the former uh, chair would say, you're new, you're new. Y'all need training, y'all need training. No, we've had life training, <laughs> lived experiences. This ain't the only board that we're in and we're in different boards that work well together. Shake your head if you want to, Marilyn. Thank but you. I think that, I yeah, well, I would just, well, I would, that's disruptive. I don't know if it is, you know that, but that's disruptive. So I'm just saying, Excuse yeah. me, excuse me, decorum, chair.
Please Final order. order. Please There's the no more hand motions. Final order. Sarah, yes. Yes. We're way order. off track. Let's try to stay. We don't have permission discussion. to say that. I still have the permission. If that's the last thing we say, that's the last thing. But Chair, but you're interrupting and you're disruptive, Marilyn, when you do that. And I'd ask the board to vote on that and say, stop doing that or to comment on that. Stop it. It's rude. Madam Chair, may I speak? I'm not sure. Commissioner Tarbutton, are you, are you finished? Yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Kansas? Um, yeah, I just want to add uh, to my comments from earlier that um, if, if we are really genuine about um, concerns about violating open meeting law, I think this situation uh, would have just simply required a question of the attorney general and, and not a, a complaint uh, or a self-report. Um, it could have well, been. Let me clarify that, though. I'm sorry. I can I can I can I finish? Okay. Can I finish. Um, it 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 would have been that simple uh, to ask somebody who really knows um, about that, rather than this punitive way of you know coming down on a board member. Um, and also, you got to see how that looks. Is that the executive director? is taking action against a board member. This, that's very problematic. Um, and it's not the first time. It's not the first time, uh, uh, you know, uh, Director Lieber has gone above and beyond to retaliate against me for years now, as a tenant, as a community member, and as a board member. Um, and I need you all to know that, whether it's as a board member or community member, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to continue to question things that don't make sense. I'm, I'm gonna to continue to keep folks accountable. Um, we serve our community. We don't serve ourselves, we serve our community. Um, and if it takes for y'all to, uh, uh, you know, go against me in this way in a public uh, um, manner, then that's fine, whatever y'all decide to do, but I'm not going anywhere. And um, while we're on the topic, and uh, uh, Madam Chair, since you mentioned this, uh, my only response to uh, your remarks at that meeting is that I made a mistake in misrepresenting my position as a member of a union. Uh, what I meant was I could be a representative, a labor representative on some of these boards, in particular the CPA. But I did not mean to say that I'm a representative of a union that I just joined. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to clarify that because some folks went way out of their way to investigate this. And folks did call uh, my union and um, uh, to, uh, to inquire about this and saying, hey, you know, this guy is misrepresenting himself. Wow, you really got a lot of time to go out of the way and do that. Um, but as board members, we have a lot more important uh, things to, to be concerned with, like the quality of life for our tenants, like the discussion we're going to have next month on moldy basements. Those kind of things, like what have you folks done into that regard? I've been working for this community practically my entire life. Before I was even a tenant at the Housing Authority, I've been engaging with the communities um, and I have I've done events and I've gotten grants to do programming for the youth. I mean, I have been, I've been working really hard over the years, even before I joined this board. Um, and my heart is in it. I'm passionate about anything housing related in this community. And I will continue to be involved. So whether y'all continue to try and attack me or not, I'm here to keep folks accountable. I'm here to work on behalf of the tenants, not y'all, on behalf of the tenants. And I will continue to address issues that concern not just me, but the tenants. And that should be our focus. It shouldn't be attacking 
uh, folks in, in, in your same uh, body of governance. So um, that's, that's all I have. That's all, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I heard, I think we said that's all I have to say. Commissioner, I can't stop. Yeah, okay. Then just to clarify, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I think when you suggested that there was a different way to submit that to the Attorney General's office, there isn't. They require a governmental body to list the ways that they will address the particular open meeting law violation, especially in self-reporting. That's what they give us. That's why the self-reporting is that they like it. They say, thank you, actually, in there. You're not required to do it enough. You know, the fact that you do it actually is a good thing, they say. And what the, the, the suggestions that we offered are actually, they're not punitive. And I think the, the continued reference to this as punitive an attack on me, um, all of those things are never once acknowledging the difficulty that we've all faced as commissioners and any governmental body about since open meeting law became the thing and no longer could one ever hit reply all, which is why, you know, the drilling home and the big red banners and whatever. Yeah, sometimes a person can, especially in the situation that you're describing, now, after the fact, harried and in an airport and many, many things, but never even an acknowledgement that that is, unfortunately, for me, that is a violation. And how would any of us know that? Because there was never any response except the one thing that was open meeting law violation. Not even in that message was there a, please excuse the emergency. I can only hit reply all. And then go on to mention, and look, I'm not trying to argue this, but it'd be one thing if you were at least acknowledging that. But instead, what you're doing is saying that this effort to try to is an attack on you mm. is, you know, and none of that is accurate. It, and in fact, it, the, you know, the requirement, which is to go to an open meeting law training, is not something that, you know, I would consider to be any kind of sentence. And in fact, you know, if it's something, I just think that it's appropriate, especially when it's it's strange that it would be the one thing, be one thing, Commissioner Cancella, you had been serving on public bodies for no less than three months, and, but it's been a long time. And so I don't think, I know it wasn't a premeditated, you know, way to try to influence people. No, but we did not write that very limited law we could appeal to you know state reps and you know we could appeal to people and say hey can't you relax that law a little bit to That's allow for cases like us you know we don't have that and i personally have been pressured to make sure that we are attending to open meeting law violations as they happen the only way you can do it is to contact them and you have to fill out their specific form that is required that says, what are you doing to address this? We're going to propose having training for the person who pressed reply all in a situation when it is not allowed. It doesn't fall under the category of schedules and agendas and whatnot. It expresses your opinion about how much you have to say on that particular topic. So I'm going to stop saying anything now. And at this point, we'll call the question and ask for the roll. So I can't respond? But it's the question? I, I don't get what you're saying. No, I mean, I'm saying, <laughs> yes, I'm saying that I'd like us to, I would like us to move on to the roll call vote. And I'm having some objection. What happens now is a person calls the question if someone I know that part. Thank you. I know that part. I just didn't know oh, what. No, no. Doing. I was answering Commissioner Cancel's question. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, he has a question too. Go ahead, Commissioner Cancel. And I, you too. Can't hear you. Yeah, no, no. I was just thinking that's pretty harsh to like have the last word and not allow me to uh, respond to your. Oh, your go ahead. Comments. No, no, no. Go ahead. You take the last word, please. Yeah, yeah. No, the part that again, the part that 
does not seem reasonable to me is the fact, okay, let's say you're 100% right, Kara's 100% right, we should have reported this, fine, report it. The part that makes me feel this is a personal attack is that rather than saying, you know, we violated open meeting law, and so therefore we're going to attend open meeting law training, but the fact that you're only asking for one commissioner to attend the training tells me that you think that nobody else needs the training except me. So again, this is where you, you, I really would like you to kind of put yourself in my shoes and be like, okay, so a responsible governmental body sees that they violated something. It seems like one, maybe more folks don't understand the law. So let's go and get training. That's the part that it doesn't, doesn't seem, you know, just like to me, it, it, it seemed punitive to uh, continue that conversation about me without me there. You know what I'm saying? So it's about being reasonable. It's about being considerate. And it's about being treating everybody equal. And the very last word then, please. I, I, it could be a point of uh, inf uh, information. My question is, we all went through that training and then you heard the trainer say, please, just besides the little training we got early on, go to training, go to training. I've been so much that I'm almost about to get my NIRO certification. How many of you, you can raise your hand, have been to training since the last time he was here? So I... I, I I mean, you know, and some people, you know, I don't know if they, they thought that that was a reference to DEI, which it wasn't. How many of you have done any of that? Because the last thing I know, uh, you know, the chair was saying, DEI, we have training and two commissioners had and like, I just, I would just ask you, okay, I just, please let me give you this example so we can, I don't know if it's, if it's hitting you. If, if a student, and they have said to me that I, I feel like you're racist, I would listen to what that person is saying and try to understand and empathize. I wouldn't get upset with him for saying it and get the rest of the students to say how bad he is and how good I am. I wouldn't do that. I would listen. And it seems like the more you, it's the yeah, but. Every time you yeah, but, that just slaps, it's a slap in the face. And nobody is saying that you are a bad person. There are a lot of things I like about you, um, uh, uh, Chair. I think you're really good. I love your knowledge about Robert's Roots of Art, but we're saying you're not being equitable. Maybe you don't see that. And if you could just look and just say, well, maybe this is something I don't know. You, why don't you respect us what we're saying, what we know? You respect uh, Chairman Jones if he's saying something about labor. You're like, okay, but why do we always have to be antagonistic and demanding when we weren't? And I just think that you know, people just need to stop. If we did, and I think we should make a motion here that we can have the Attorney General look through all of our records. Because you already had a trainer said, those many meetings, bad, bad, bad. Maybe then they can show you, maybe a white person has to show you what you've done wrong that constitutes, you know, a, 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 a targeting or, or, you know, unconscious bias, blah, 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 blah. Maybe that needs to happen. I think you have a good heart. I really do. And I think for me, what hurts me is that I'm thinking Northampton, we should be progressive. <laughs> this is the stuff in Texas that I grew up with. I wouldn't be arguing with that because it's just not there yet. <sighs> So I just, you know, well, thank you for interrupting me, please. But I'm just saying, all I'm asking you is part to heart, part to heart. Think about that and quit going over it again and excusing and yourself what you did, you know, whatever. Nobody will love you less for that. A Commissioner Jones, please. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things. Um, the question was called and yet this continues uh, more to the point in, in going through um, the documents again for this meeting and even in Kara's letter, um, it says, um, we'll ask um, the commissioner to attend. Uh, can we just amend, <clears throat> amend the motion to ask and leave it at that. And whether the commissioner acts on it or not is up to them. And um, I also agree with uh, the same commissioner that the, the uh, in rereading the attorney general's response, um, it is pretty weak. Um, 
it wasn't a huge violation. It was a mistake, but um, I would just think we could ask um, that the training um, take place. And um, the, one of the other things that everyone's missing is attorney Driscoll, when we did the training said, you folks ought to be able to have short, quick and to the point meetings. And we don't come anywhere close. And um, I'm not going to spend all night talking about these issues. I just got off the plane from the Midwest. I have an early start tomorrow morning back to work. And we seem to be talking in circles. And I once again um, call the question. Okay, I hear the question's been called and at this point I'm required to move us. Although I heard Commissioner Jones in his calling of the question also ask for an amendment to change the language to say ask instead of require. I'm opening that up to see how it's written. I would, I would accept Oh, it that. says that. Commissioner Jones, it actually says that. Yeah. I'm actually reading it again. It says request. So let's yeah, just yeah, request. Yeah. yeah and let's yeah, get off the side that, was... that, that this is some kind of a punishment. It's a request. Yeah, I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to make sure when you said that. So, but yeah, I, I, was wrong. I looked and I think, no, no, no. It's a really good point that you make up. We can't require, we can't require any commissioner to do anything. We're colleagues here as a board, though. There are, there are certain things like this where you can re request that in this case uh, to address the issues raised. Now, I think, I'm sorry, Commissioner Jones, you, uh, you, uh, you moved the question. And I think that requires us to move to a vote. Correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. You can withdraw it. Are you gonna withdraw your move to the quest, moving the question? because? No, the question sure, is, to what is to request the current the current motion on the floor is to request the commissioner, et cetera, et cetera. The reason so, I asked you if you're going to withdraw your moving the question, meaning calling for a vote, which you did when you said I move the question once again. The only reason I ask you is Commissioner Cancel wants to speak. And he would not speak if that, if that moving the question is still in effect. You haven't, have you withdrawn? No. Okay. No, I want to, I want to get this meeting, want to get through this meeting. Thank you. Then I'll just point out that the, we moved the question. I accepted it as a friendly amendment. That's fine. We've moved the question to a vote as unamended as written right on the statement that you see, request dot, 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 at all. I'm and you make all the roll. Okay. Motion that the board request the commissioner who violated the OML to attend OML training and provide documentation to attend. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Cancel. No. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton. Absolutely not. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Madam Chair, four yeas and two nays. Okay, thank you. That, that motion carries. The next item of new business, I'm pulling up that agenda. Um, August. Agenda, sorry, gets closed whenever I. Would you read the next item of business, please? Yes, um, this is amendments to the board bylaws. The first one um, says uh, that it's a motion to amend the board bylaws to include the code of conduct language from the 760 CMR 4.03. Point of order. Oh, so I don't know if I say that now. I would ask that this issue be tabled to the next meeting. I do agree that um, Sir, uh, Commissioner Jones is tired, and this is something that it doesn't need to be 
swept on the rug really quickly. Let's give this some thought. Um, I'll ask then, given okay. that concern brought up by Commissioner Tarbutton, if actually as a group, she could consider amending that motion to be those ones that are under new business from here on in, pulling them up, which is all of item five amendments to the bylaws. And I think I heard Commissioner Cancel say second. Is that, did I hear that correctly? Uh, no, I don't want to second something because that's not what I thought uh, what was, um, was yeah. suggested. I, it, it was a little add on, but I was just saying these are the issues, but a lot of them have to do with the um, the bylaws. And I think that I, I have uh, questions with that. Um, and that it, it, and if we have a commissioner who's tired, let's be human. Uh, we can deal with this next uh, next month as well. I ask that it be tabled. Just to for, for clarification, what is it you want tabled? Everything from here on in? or Everything that's dealing with the bylaws, yeah. I don't have it in front of me because everything he's losing. I understand. Believe me, I got the same problem here. Oh, Commissioner, yeah. Kinsel, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton is asking that everything under the bylaws item, which is actually everything till the end of the meeting, would be uh, continued till the September meeting. And I don't know if there is a second since Commissioner Tarbutton made the motion. Is there a second? A second. Uh, Commissioner Richards, second. Then is there, we can ask for a roll call on this. So Motion Madam Chair, if I, could, if I could just be clear, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton made a motion to table the rest of the agenda to the following meeting, which will occur in September. Um, and it was seconded by Commissioner Richards. Is that yes, correct? You could say, you could say rest of the agenda, or you could say item number five under new business related to bylaws, including the subsection A, B, C, D. Okay. And um, so I shall call the roll. Uh, Commission, uh, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Uh, Vice Chairperson Cancel. Commissioner Tarbun, I uh, commend you for a modeling uh, consideration for your fellow board members. And so I will vote yes. Okay, uh, Commissioner Jones. Yes, and thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. You're muted. Yes, good call. <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, that is with six oh, yes. Okay, two. thanks. Then that, that'll have, we'll see that again in September. And um, thank you all. We have just the final motion for this evening. If someone motion, would make it. Motion to adjourn. All right. Second and seconded Commissioner Tarbutton. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>